All right. Are we ready? It's 9.30. Um, we'll call to order the day, January 24th. I apologize. Um, and I will pass it over. Oh, let the record reflect that Mrs. Studdard is not present today. And I will pass it to you, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you. Madam Chair. So today we'll just go through um, uh, board general reviews. Please, at any point in time that you uh, have any questions, please ask. And uh, we'll start with C1, which is pretty much our minutes from our student here in regular meeting from uh, January 5th. Uh, C2 starts with the 1718 Florida Youth Challenge uh, Academy calendar. This sets the calendar for the entire year of 1718. I know there uh, may be some questions, so I guess I'll jump into it in reference to um, our partnership moving forward for 17-18. For um, as you know, that uh, this becomes a, a heavy funding source for us from a district perspective. Um, we staff has had uh, a number of conversations with uh, the Florida Youth Challenge uh, Academy to talk about finances in the sense that um, next year the potential costs could range between $500,000 to $600,000 to the district. I believe that that cost is, uh, is, is very, uh, very high, especially since uh, we have less than 13% of the student body that the, the Clay County uh, serve, you know, actually you know, provides. So um, multiple conversations there. The, the Florida Youth Challenge Academy is really looking right now to find additional funding. I, I do not know if they're going to find that funding or not. I can try to, I've been trying to help them on the, on the site as well, so as staff. Um, they have until um, the end of April, by May 1st, to identify what funding source that they will have identified in order to continue to, um, to have the partnership with Lake County. Um, to be very transparent, if that funding does not come through, I really honestly don't, do not see how this county can continue to financially support this initiative. Why I believe it's a value, um, I don't think it's fair to Clay County to have um, only less than 13% of the student body and us pay $600,000 to support it. So, but I just wanted to make sure that, okay, uh, I guess uh, by May 1st they have to get, to get with us to let us know financially. We could expedite that if you would like, but I was just trying to give them some time to work. They're probably waiting on legislative. Yeah, session. Yeah. Usually, funding does come through for that every year, so hopefully, yeah, well, I hope they, I hope some will come through. What's the What's the average amount we get from last year? One year we got a windfall, but yeah, last year was down to correct. like nothing. Mm -hmm. That was uh, two, years two years ago. Last year, they, um, the funding did not materialize. <coughs> yeah. So they do get about 175 from um, FTE. Well, they do get the FTE mm -hmm. as well as a partnership with um, the <coughs> Department of Defense. Right. Um, so that that revenue is coming in this year to support right. um, their activities. And so we get the FTE for each student from, you know, their surrounding yeah, districts of where they all come from. Mm -hmm. But what's the what's the added, what's the actual cost to our district? Uh, the actual cost to our district is about um, half a million, five, a little over a half a million dollars, about five hundred and sixty million dollars at this time. Um, yeah, thousand. <laughs> Five hundred million more than that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 we're going to start three of those programs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've got millions on. Uh, yeah. It takes me to do numbers. <laughs> yes. Um, so, um, but yes, that's and that's right now. They've got about seventeen for this half of year. We've only generated about a hundred thousand related, um, which equates to about seventeen FTEs. So, which is about 25 kids, maybe. Or is that how many are in the program at this oh, particular Clay time? Clay County, yes. Clay County. Mm -hmm. But overall, it's 180, 200 students? Yes, ma'am, close to 200 yeah. students. Yeah. yeah. Um, that they have. It's around the entire state, so. Yeah, I know it's the only one in the state. Yes, ma'am, Which is. is why it's such an important program. It is important. And it really does serve the need that, I mean, we've all been very supportive of it all along, so. But. Hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money. That we're paying, so, mm -hmm. so yeah, hopefully some funding will come. Well, you keep us posted on on the update on everything. Thank you. Yes, 
Okay, C3 is the uh, Volunteer Pre-K VPK Summer Program. This is a 34-day program that we offer every summer. It's uh, for, as it will be hosted at uh, Fluminum Island High School. Uh, student day would be from 7.30 to 4.30, and uh, they'll have uh, one day off, which will be, we'll, um, we'll have July 4th off. And but they'll be able to um, uh, come to school for those 34 days in order to, to be exposed to foundational skills. C4 is the, uh, is the volume license agreement with Microsoft. This is a uh, three-year agreement between Microsoft and Clay County. The, the amount of the contract is $297,000. This takes care of all of our Windows servers, office suites, um, enterprise agreement, which is un unlimited to us as our district, and it's on you know, thousands of our computers and laptops so that we can interact and, and work and they uh, have a Microsoft product to, in order to, to function um, and be in compliance with state law and, and, and other requirements within our district. Um, we do partner, I believe, and Mr. Hendricks, tell me if I'm wrong, with partner review. Uh, yes, sir. We, we do, which helps us kind of um, uh, kind of navigate through identifying the best price for our contract. And they are uh, very supportive of, of us in, with creating this, uh, this opportunity within, within our district. So if we did want to cancel it, not that we do, but if we did, what's the cancellation policy? Carl? The cancellation, um, Policy wouldn't be the probably the real issue would be what are you replacing it with? Right. So well, no, I guess what I'm wondering is because it relates to what we're looking at with the GPS, 30 days, 90 day. If we did want to, not that we would because it's necessary. I yes. get that, but I'm just thinking you know, here's something that if we had to, yes, ma'am. What hoops do we have to jump through? I believe there's a, I believe it's a 30 day, not a 90 day. Um, let me look through the 17 pages of it and I'll find that for you. I've never really entertained the thought. I know. <laughs> I'm Microsoft. Microsoft. Use it. I know but all of our servers, all of our machines would, would cease to function. I already had to give out the Outlook. I don't know what I'd do without Excel Word. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's also the Windows know, operating system. Yeah. I guess I shouldn't have asked. No, it's I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I, let me, if you'll give me just a few moments, I can look through and find it. Or wait until it's a dinner time. Okay. Right. I'm sorry. That's all right. Mr. Hendricks, just let me know when you get to that point. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, C5 is the personnel consent agenda for uh, February. Any questions on that one? C6 is, um, is the 1617 uh, salary schedule. This is where a uh, new initiative became, which increased minimum wage. <coughs> it increased it from $8.05 to $8.10. This will impact subs, clerical, um, some bus drivers, um, uh, cafe van drivers as well. Uh, by state statute and law, we have to post this in every one of our schools and our buildings, and uh, we have sent that communication out to, to all stakeholders to post to make sure we're in compliance. Any questions? Mm -hmm. uh, C7 is our proclamation for uh, Career Technology Technical Educational Month. Mm -hmm. um, this is uh, we'll have a number of activities within uh, within our schools for teacher recognitions. Also, looking at uh, leadership clay class uh, tours within our high schools. Uh, schedule will be pushed out. We will also partner <coughs> with the chamber to to highlight CTE and the activities that, that we have um, uh, implemented within our schools. So that community can continue to identify with the, the great things that we're doing and celebrate it. And then there's also some things that are going on from a national level that we will push out to our schools as well. Uh, C8 is K-12 academic support services for student travel. This is where um, Fluminum Island is going to ROTC. Uh, we have oh Oakley to Tampa. There was only one that was not doing it. I know. I, had, I, I know. noticed that. I was yeah. like, oh, yeah, and we're and doing it. He came to us at the meeting yeah. last month. No, that, that's not the same one. There's another one. Was another. That one yeah, he was ahead. very upset last month. He was ahead of, he's yeah. ahead of time. He's still ahead of time. But there was one that happened yeah. in January. So there's one that's in January 11th. Uh, we're but, doing better. Well, <laughs> we're doing better, but if I could just, I, I, that one weighed heavily on me after our last workshop yeah. because a lot of, 
I don't like putting blame on anyone, sure. but it was frustrating when I heard, well, the teachers aren't getting this in in time, and I'm sitting back going, yeah, time out. <laughs> you know, some of us, I mean, a lot sure. of teachers plan ahead, but it would be helpful, and I don't know if that's, I didn't know this, I'm sorry, I didn't look for this, but it would be helpful to put a date of origination on those forms, because there was not a date of origination. So, for instance, as a teacher, I take students, or I was responsible for taking students to SeaWorld. And when I filled out that app with that form, I gave it, I filled it out, I put all of my um, supporting documentation with it, I had the contracts from uh, the charter buses of, attached to that, I had um, the information from SeaWorld that we had faxed back and forth to each other attached to that total cost, what it would cost the children, who would basically, how many children, how many um, chaperones, approximately. And I would put all of that together, and I would turn it into our principal secretary. There was no date on that that I could say I have originated this right. on, you know, sure. January. Let's say generally we did it uh, the first part of October. Sea World trip was not coming up until February 24th. Right. But we start way early because sure. we want to make sure the kids know yeah. about it. Well, they can get their permission money. slips and they can start saving their money because it's an expensive sure. trip. So I don't know how long it sits on that desk. Right. Then goes to the principal for signature. Right. And if by chance it's an overnight, which <laughs> no way. Uh, but if it were an overnight, then it would eventually have to come here for approval. Yes, ma'am. And that, that just adding a date of, you know, when did yeah, you first three. sign this? So we know exactly. Yeah. But you notice yeah. on the bottom, there's no yeah. date. So if you just put um, to the right, just put date on it or for everybody. Right. So you'll or see, whatever. You'll yes. see, we'll be able to see date, date of origination. Date yeah. of yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Then yeah. we know, and we can, so we yeah. can okay. in essence, figure out where the snake is mm -hmm. and why it doesn't come to us in a timely manner. Yes, ma'am. We can, we can modify this form. We'll modify mm -hmm. the form as well. we we'll put Thank date on Thank you. Because I just thought. There's too much, too many excited. hands in the pot for that one. I was excited we did better this morning. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, uh, C9 is proclamation for um, school social worker week. Um, right now we currently have 10 social workers in Clay County and uh, schools are doing a number of activities to celebrate their, their, their supports for their, not only for their teachers, but for their students as well. Um, um, Mr. McCauley, any, anything that you have for excitement activities? And each school is, my understanding, each school is sort of operating kind of based on the relationship with their, their social worker, and whether it might be a breakfast or a lunch or any sort of special event that, that the school themselves are deciding what to do. And uh, I know this is not time, but I say that it's surprising that we only have 10 social Thank workers you. in the great need of For 37,000 so, children. Yeah, so I mean, we will work with the board to, to figure out a solution for 17, 18. I think there could be an opportunity there to work with our legislators to, um, there's a lot of money that's given, and I think it's political, but there's a lot of money that's given to Clay Behavioral. Yes, ma'am. And I just, um, we hear a lot of referrals to Clay Behavioral, mm -hmm. and I'm not trying to knock the people at Clay Behavioral. I've met some nice people that work there, but we have never had a parent say, I had a fantastic experience with Clay Behavioral. So there's a whole lot of money, state money, that's going to that organization yes, that I don't think is meeting the needs of the county. Yes, and I'll say it politically, I say no, it, it's in meeting the needs of the county and I think that if we possibly can kind of massage that to work through um, maybe getting some of that to hire some more social workers right. to help mm -hmm. with that initial referral. Yes, of, so excuse my ignorance, is this a Clay County support system mm -hmm. for parents? And it's, it's not just for no. children, but it's also for employees. It's for the county. It's, 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 it's not just for the It's like system. your River Region in Duval. Okay. It okay. serves. It's the um, exact same as River Region in Duval. It serves the whole county except okay. for the Keystone area. Right. The Keystone mm -hmm. area has an organization called Right Path. Right. They are a very well functioning organization. Um, they've got some partnerships and the things that. I mean, they actually do some after-school activities in conjunction with some other groups in our schools. Like, they have a program for girls and things. So, it's interesting to watch the difference in the organizations and that kind of thing. If you, t if you have, a con have time to have a conversation with any of our social workers, um, they can tell you a lot about their experiences. Mm -hmm. Kathy Hill is one who will talk to you She's about a fan of the right path, but... Um, not everybody is, so do your research before you go forward with anything further. 
with me. Why? What, what do you mean by that? I knew several employees who have left the Keystone area and are now working with Episcopal. So um, it, it, it serves a need. It serves a, the Keystone area well. We certainly should look at clay behavior and see if there are any more school counselors into our district so that we're providing the services instead of outsourcing it because a lot of funding does go. But that would be better to bring it in house as school employees and school counselors. That's what, that I think that we should have. I, I was just asking, and I'm, I'm referring to Ms. Pye only because she's Because I work for them. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I was under the understanding that we're getting support from Clay Behavioral already. Mm -hmm. We are our SAP counselors. <coughs> I, that's where I came from, actually, Personal was Clay Behavioral support. many years ago. Um, the SAP counselors are still Clay Behavioral that's um, in your school system. And also at Bannerman, mm -hmm. your ESE th therapists are all Clay Behavioral. Mm -hmm that we've outsourced to, um, Dr. Legetko, I don't know who else that we outsource um, them, and they do a great job, mm -hmm. our SAT counselors. Where they're really weak is the referral system. It's a dead end. If you try to refer as a counselor, is I'm a counselor and I'm referring to Clay Behavioral, I'd like to just, you know, I always had pull because I, I know the people. But I would hear all the counselors, and they would call me and say, well, you got to help me here. But um, we have to do better. Um, their executive director is very easy to work with. We have to do better in servicing not only our kids, but our families, because they are the only addiction services that we have in Clay County. Um, okay. So, And also, they're an alternative to Baker acting, yes. um, which, you know, we would prefer to, to have a you know, to get them in a, on a referral as quickly as possible into clay behavioral rather than call the police and Baker Act. And please know, I wasn't... No, no, um, no, no, but I know the frustration I just, because I think exactly what Ms. Condon is saying yeah. is absolutely true. Mm -hmm. The frustration of dealing through the access part of Clay County, we have to make that easier for our school system. Mm -hmm. and, and to Ms. Condon's point, we, we hear it monthly at our disciplines that Yep. Parents can't get scheduled. Right. They're trying right. to be scheduled in. Clay behavioral is so overwhelmed that. Yeah. So okay. she's, and she's we also used to get River Region in here because Clay Behavioral couldn't handle everybody. But somehow the inter county contract went away around 2001. Mm -hmm. and, um, and there was another group from Duval that used to come in here, and we don't seem to cross the boundary lines anymore. And I'm not sure that Clay Behavioral can do really <coughs> handle the amount of, um, of concerns we have in the county. And that's why mm -hmm. Keystone went out to yeah. right path. They don't just handle our school district, they're right. the whole county. county. So it, it's yeah, a the whole county. Anybody who's ever been there, you see their, their waiting room is usually pretty packed. All right, so I'll look into and see what kind of additional service we can, partnerships we can create, and then see if, um, if we can assist with the referral process. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. All right, C10, proposed allocation changes. Uh, right now we're experiencing some classrooms at Argyle Elementary School that are, that are high due to some new students that are journeying into the classrooms. So we have student classrooms between 26, 25 to 27. So we're asking us for two teacher assistants to, to go in and provide supports to, to some of these classrooms. And that's to be a total of things around $15,000. It says um, three, three, and five. three and five, oh. and um, this will be used in SAI, SAI funding. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've ever seen a uh, proposed <laughs> allocation change <is> so small. Which <laughs> <laughs> is one thing on it, right? <laughs> Every month it's like this is know. a. We went back and forth with this with Ms. Cornegay because we between a teacher because I think it's grade I think it's grade three mm -hmm. or four. I don't know. But they're way <coughs> over and they've been over. Five is but, over in there. You know, and, but teachers won't give up their kids this time of the school year. Yeah, they want to. They you know, they're, they're like, up. yeah, I need help, but no, you're not having them. You know, and so that's why I went to with the assistants. Well, was the fifth grade there was no place to put them? I don't right. The it's one of those, I forget which grade it and was. The, was the fifth grade just I mean, for the record, the fifth grade also had an ESE assistant. Right. Um, but it was, I think here again, I'm not, the contract side of it, point six, I believe. Um, so, or assist, I'm sorry, I should not say assistant, I should say teacher. But the ESE teacher was only there Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Mm -hmm. So on Mondays and Fridays, the students had an aide, but they didn't have a teacher. Hello. Yeah. That's and it word. was it was very frustrating because it was, Oh, I had. And she's my, over too because she's, she's an 18. Yes. 
Uh, and I mean, it was two days. Several days a week. An inclusion class. I know. 26, I think. So, yeah. Miss Bola, so is this a... Um, I will be there tomorrow and find out if it's unresolved. Well, you, um, I'll have staff look as well. I need to figure out if it's uh, what type of allocation is it. Is it a support facilitator? Is it a uh, full-time teacher? What it is it? A, it was a full-time, I want to say it was there a full-time ESE teacher. ESE teacher. However, her full-time status was point whatever. It was not full, I mean... She was six. there three day point six. Thank you. So I technically have half time teacher, um, but the the time allotted for fifth grade. Yeah. So that was, doesn't sound yeah. right. So I'll look into that. Yeah. That's that what was grade level? Fifth grade. Fifth five. Is, is there other schools? Mine. Many the same. <laughs> kind of I don't know. That's the first I've ever heard of something that we do a point six of a teacher. So. Oh, we have a number of point. We have teachers. point five teachers, but not not full stand teachers. not full standalone teachers. You shouldn't. When you want not, to write, not full standalone teachers. I mean, no, I, they're I, not I, full standalone. This we have a regular ed full stand. Of, I'm not certain where you're. That's okay. The, the terminology. We have a regular teacher, yeah. full time teacher, who's teaching that inclusion class. So and we also PSC have, PSC and PSC one of them is math science, and the other is, yeah, that we also so it's have point eight. six teacher. Yeah. Who, so your point six could be, point six, six, right, so your point six could be, teacher, yeah. yeah. Who yeah. comes oh, yeah. in, so that but was, only on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, right. when those students are supposed yeah, to be served five days a week right. Right. Then that's for the, so many hours. Yeah. And they were not, we're yeah. not pursuing, or we're yeah. not giving them the service. That, that, that's they, probably correct. Uh, that's no. on their IEP. The, the issue is, is the point six. They're probably itinerant to go and provide services. Mm -hmm. We would rather with them to be a full teacher, so they can not only service fifth grade, but they can also service any student from K five. That's yes. something we'll look at anyway for the sure. future. Sure. But what Miss Bola just said, if it's on their IEP, we need to make sure we're. Filling yeah. one on the IEP, the hours of the and if it IEP. says or five days a week, right. two hours a day, yeah. it's usually we have to provide that. Minutes a week. Well, they may be providing that within the three days, but I'll look into. C11 is the budget amendments for the month of December. You'll see on the on this process is a monthly process that comes to the board. You'll see a third calculation that identifies the um, the decrease in six hundred sixty-six thousand dollars. You will also see the, the school improvement recognition funds that have been provided to the district, and I think that's a $1.2 million to, to our district. Please know that this year only 10 <coughs> schools um, were recognized, bless you, and, and identified for 1516 for either maintaining an A or increasing mm -hmm. the school, a grade, increasing the school letter grade. If you look at it historical, the year before it was 22 <coughs> schools. So we've decreased the funding that is that is going to these schools. Do you think that that was intentional by the state, given that they, the DOE chose not to count games for last year? Yeah, um, you know, I, I don't know the answer to that. I know that um, they've been kind of, you know, very generous with keeping this money awarded to schools mm -hmm. to, to help them financially in so many different ways. So I don't know if it was intentional from their part. You know, somewhat it could be perceived as and somewhat intentional. But um, I think the most part from our side of it is that we did have a number of schools that dropped uh, mm -hmm. from a B to a C or, a, 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 you know, to an A to a B, which really impacted the yeah, overall Yeah, but I think number. they wouldn't have if they had counted gains. I mean, those were some of our Title I schools yeah. that it historically, where their higher yeah. grades had come, was yeah. from counting sure. gains, not just yeah. from schools. So our, our lower performer schools usually do better, and I say that, it seems they usually do better with gains. I can tell you overall from a district perspective, we slide, we we decline in gains mm -hmm. overall. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of opportunity, and that just with us putting systems in place for small group instruction and make sure we have the curriculum in place to help them for tier two and tier three um, sort of interventions, which we roll for 17 and 18. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> C12 is uh, every month is warrants and vouchers. This is where we list items and uh, itemized expenditures and uh, a lot of uh, information in there as requested from last month. Um, C13 is our, our, our financial <coughs> financial report as well for December. Um, you'll see that we currently have um, $58 million to, uh, currently and it's pretty much aligned with where we are with our revenue collection. And I would say to date that we spent around 38% of our of our budget transition to 40% as at the end of December. Um, 
and it just gives them itemized of what we're what our expenditures are and what we're experiencing financially. C14 is uh, furniture and equipment. This is again a movement of furniture, AV material, AV material, software from uh, for from school to school, <coughs> computers, laptops, cabinets, in order for you to understand what what we currently have with, within our schools. C15 is um, uh, is all AV equipment, which is deals with uh, VHS, uh, any kind of relief maps, uh, film strips, globes, <laughs> skeletons, whatever it may be that, that we currently have in our schools. We still have film yes, strips. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, we have VHS too. <laughs> <laughs> we can VHS isn't so bad, but yeah, uh, film yeah, strips are pretty. Uh, <laughs> it's back in my day. <laughs> uh, C16 is uh, again property for software. Just gives you an indication of where we are um, by school with the software that we have on site, whether it's an instructional software or a practitioner software to use um, within our um, within our system. C17 is, is our vehicle and just gives the overall value of what we have in our in our white fleet and overall fleet. C18 is deletion of certain items. Um, this is where we're looking at deleting. Uh, we have uh, some monitors and keyboards that aren't functioning, so that these and these um, um, this equipment will be removed um, uh, for the month of uh, February. Uh, and also some projectors and copiers. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Bola, have you see, haven't seen that before? It's broken down by schools. Yeah. So she can go through mm -hmm. all the way. Yeah, I took that. Mm -hmm. I was curious what was leaving. Yeah. 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 It's me, me the I mean, there, there are a lot of old computers that are still clunking along, however, for those kids. Because um, Robert Johnson, does he still have that website where he Yes. You know, I remember the year it was school bus was up for sale. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like a school bus for sale. He's doing a good job making sure that any, 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 any material that we uh, delete and we, we, we try to sell. All right, C19 is, uh, uh, is approval of uh, our payroll calendars for 17-18. This deals with transportation, 9, 10, 11, and 12-month employees. Also looking at any substitute uh, pay schedule and then gives us any pay schedules for, for summer and any deadlines for individuals submitting the, the proper paperwork so staff can complete this in, a, in an effective fashion. You know, it's funny. Um, did you guys, I don't think we've ever seen here before, a payroll calendar for, let me think which one is it, so it's a nine month, the deadlines, I, I've never seen that posted on here before, but, you know, it's not something that we've seen before, mm -hmm. when it all has to be in the year and everything, it's just one more level that you're providing us, so thank you. That's when your staff's doing a good job. This is not anything that we've... Um, C20, I know that C20 is on here. This is for us to look at uh, the specs for renovating Clay High School Culinary Program. Um, to be transparent with you, we got a call this morning that the, the architect is going, is, has been rushed to the hospital. So all the backup that we need and specs that we need, is uh, he's not going to be able to, uh, to supply that with us in, in the next day. So um, we're going to ask that we strike this from, mm -hmm. from this month and move it to, to March. And this is going to be the same for C21, which is Wilkerson Junior High School. No, C24. Oh, sorry, C24. So we go C21. Okay. Um, so C21 is uh, Wilkerson Junior High School. This is for HVAC replacement. Um, this is going to be around four hundred thirty thousand dollars for building one, four, and five. We have units that are eighteen years of age, and it's costing us a number of uh, you know a lot of money for us to for the upkeep of it. And uh, we have a number of uh, issues internally the, to making certain that it's running, fun, you know, at a high level at, at all times. Um, we will be using the Education Facilities Plan funding for um, the capital improvement funding for this, um, which is our property tax property tax funding. Uh, C22 is the 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 ad for a Keystone Heights uh, repiping science wing. This is where we're trying. We will add the gas, water, and air to um, to the wing at um, at Keystone Heights High, uh, Junior Senior High School. This will allow us to have uh, additional hands-on opportunities for students for inquiry-based learning, and uh, we want to make sure our students are involved in a line of investigations every single week. 
and then not only engaging in, in inquiry-based learning activities, but also re responding to them <coughs> in an intellectual way to prove and demonstrate mastery of our learning. And I think hands-on is, is, is definitely a need in every one of our science classes. And this allows this opportunity to do this at Keystone. And right now, I believe that this hasn't been functional functioning and um, uh, this is the right thing by kids. Mm -hmm. um, this, I think it's going to cost us around $120,000 as it relates to the capital improvement fund and um, I don't know how long, how long will, it, will it take? It'll, we'll get it done over the summer. <coughs> it'll get done over the summer so we'll be ready for next year. Awesome. Good yeah. for those kids. Yeah. Really excited. Okay. Um, Alright, number 23 is uh, just uh, pre-qualification contractors. Any contractors that uh, would like to be a part of, uh, you know, to, to bid, they Submit their name and information bond, and it goes on this list. Can I ask a quick question? Yes, ma'am. I'm, I think, on this committee. This uh, is one of which my assignments. Yes. And what does uh, this committee do? So I, I had no <laughs> idea what I was doing. Every month, at, and usually at the board meeting, but you can meet with Mr. Merrill. When I first got on the board, this was one I was assigned to, and I went down and met with um, Mike Elliott, and he explained the whole process. There's about eight people that the um, application goes to before it gets to you, you're normally the last person that signs it. And um, you can go through, take it home. I always took it home, reviewed it, looked at it, because it was new to me and I was afraid to put my name on something. And then I realized all the experts have approved this before it yes, gets to yes, me. Exactly. And so, um, and a lot of times they'll bring it to you at the board meeting, you can sure. decide it then, or you can take it home and bring it back to them. So it's monthly. And, and Mr. Merrill can explain. Okay. And this is just... It's putting them in the pool of <coughs> contractors that we can contact. The statute with. says that if you want to bid on a project, you have to be pre qualified with the school mm -hmm. district. Correct. And this is there to make sure they have the insurances, the right licenses, and all that. Mm -hmm. So, like the bus companies that run our children on field trips, right? right. Okay, just wanted to be sure. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Go ahead and be working on it. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, seat 24 is also going to be, we're going to remove this as well and move it to March. This is another part of the, the same uh, explanation that I just provided with the gentleman not being able to provide the information. Who's the architect? Bidet and Hall. Sorry? Bidet and Hall. Oh. Thank you. Seat 25 is just completion of Lake Asbury Elementary School and Junior High for, for light and protection. This is um, an initiative that... Uh, hmm. Anything from a cost, I don't see cost. Well, this it was done when it was uh, first approved. This is the uh, final completion. Uh, basically, uh, we've got several areas in the county that seem to get hit by lightning fairly frequently, so we, uh, we get these new lightning protection, big pole that says hit me instead of the school. And, uh, <laughs> and they've, they've worked really well. Ridgeview High School has got them, and we did them down at Keystone. And so the, it, it really provides protection for our electronic equipment, particularly Good. fire alarms that yeah. would seem to get zapped quite frequently. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we move to discussion for um, uh, D1. Uh, this is a contract <coughs> for Catapult Academy. This is uh, I'm bringing to the board an opportunity for us to help students who are mm -hmm. from 16 years of age to 22 years of age for a somewhat of a, a different uh, intervention for a dropout prevention program. This is very different than AMI and PACE. This was on the, it was on the last not, night. It's not, it's not, hour, it's not on the cut. So. Well, if you see, it's see red. the little red thumbs up. I, You're still working we, on it. We changed out the attachment today. Okay. And because it's not fully approved, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I, I should have clicked the little thumbs up and then it would appear on the one that, on the paper copy. But it is on the agenda. So can you pull up the back of on there? Just go yes, on. I can. That's the wrong one. That's wrong. That's yeah. Yeah. So for the backup, I put a potential contract. Um, I put a PowerPoint mm -hmm. presentation, and I also put data points that uh, well, there for surrounding okay. uh, surrounding there was counties an throughout the state. The last time I saw it. That's why. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it. Yeah, so um, there's no initial cost to us. I mean, it, it's just like um, I would say AMI and PACE at the cost of the FTE. So students, um, the, but I would say this, uh, we, ha we have <coughs> right now 104, bless you, 104 11th grade students that have below 10 credits and, and, uh, or below 10 credits or below 1.5 GPA, which are not on track to graduate. That's significantly low for 11th grader. We also have 23 seniors that have uh, below 12 credits and a 1.5 GPA as well. And to be transparent, that we don't really have another option for these students. Um, Ma'am? Bannerman, 
they could go to Bannerman, but the issue is, is I don't believe personally that they can catch up uh, that with that pace academically. And they're not necessarily behavior problems. No, students. they're just these are, struggling. The, these are students that are struggling academically. Now, this is only 127 students that are internally within our within our system. This opens up for between 16 years of age and 22 years of age. So this goes greater okay. to than outside of our school and goes to the community. We have so many kids that have that have not been successful. Remember, our, our graduation rate was 84.7% last year, 83.7 the year before, and it's been below. So there's so many graduates that haven't fulfilled an obligation with reaching a diploma, and this allows this opportunity. So going up to 22 years of age is extremely attractive, and we're helping the entire community. Um, yes, ma'am, completely. And to answer your question directly, now we will lose FTE for the students. Um, however, I believe this is a greater pathway for them that we can service. Now, what the Catapult does is gives us gives the district back 10%, and we can do whatever we want to do with 10% per FTE. I know it's not a lot, but it's some money. Um, but I would say eventually you'll lose this money anyways because the student's going to drop out. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, very different from AMI. AMI is really looking at students with behavior issues, uh, students that may, uh, may not interact, uh, who have had... Um, juvenile justice and interaction mm -hmm. and right now we have 33 students that are housed at Clay, Clay High School. Um, in addition we have PACES for right. females mm -hmm. and let me go back, AMI only allows us to, um, to service kids from grades 6 to 11 so this goes beyond the 22 which I think is more attractive. Um, the other part is uh, PACE is for females and you know they can only stay for 15 months um, so that's a program that the individuals may have experienced, uh, whether it be abuse, pregnancy, whatever it may be. So this is just another opportunity. And you're not looking at dropping out AMI? Oh, no, no, no. This, this continues. We, we just have another layer of support. Yeah. Um, I have vetted this through a number of people in this room, also our data analysts and, and, and high school leaders, and they are excited about another opportunity for our kids. Now, please note, this is just not, hey, you go here. We are very intentional who is selected when we meet with parents and we meet with stakeholders and we also meet with Catapult. Um, uh, to be honest, Catapult wanted to go three and a half year contract. I think that it's at the end of this year and one year, so it's a one, one and a half years, so we can determine overall effectiveness. And at any point in time, I, I think we wrote it in here, it's a <coughs> 30 or 90 day release that we can walk away at any point in time. Um, but I do believe eventually uh, if we can jump on for the next couple of years, we can eliminate, eliminate ultimate use if we can address um, getting students on track and being aligned with their cohort. Quick question. Did you, the, how does this um, cooperate with the credit recovery system already in place at Bannerman? Will it complement that? Will it be something entirely Yeah, it, it will be somewhat, it, it'll be somewhat the same. It, it gives them, they do, so Bannerman is focused on getting students to be uh, isolating students who have exhibited undesired behaviors and helping them with mental mental health wraparound. Catapult does the same thing. It also allows some students to probably accelerate where they need to. Um, this will do the same thing. Uh, Catapult will also, though, they focus on a five-star diploma. This is where they work kids to get, not only they, they're able to get a diploma, they're, they, they focus on getting students to be college ready, they, they focus on students to apply for college, apply for scholarships, and they focus on students um, having 24, 20, a minimum of 25 hours of internships within a business organization for volunteers. So it gets them to a point where they either have a pathway for being successful from a career or also get them to a pathway being successful um, uh, with um, being exposed to um, the right behaviors in, in, inside of making the right decision going to college. But in the end, the other part that they do is they seek students to be um, in, industry certified, a certification for industry certification, which is very unique for a school that's doing trial prevention. So they're, we're trying to get a five-tool um, graduate, and I think that's attractive for our kids. So is this considered a charter school? Or is this no, it'll be under our umbrella. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be on, under our umbrella, and they will not receive a school grade, so they have a, a school improvement grade. Okay. So. And have you found a spot to house it? Yeah, I'm going to walk Orange Park, uh, I think it's virtual, to, to, tomorrow, mm -hmm. to see if they have uh, uh, some classrooms. Right. And I say right now, to be honest, I would say we'd, we'd, have, we'd have no more than 50 kids that mm -hmm. would probably take us up in this late of the game. Um, anything from you, Mr. McCollum? Mm -hmm. Looking at the rooms where we have community ed, adult ed, yeah. over in that same area. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Garrett? Yes, ma'am. Um, this count that you just gave, are those non-ESE students? That's um, all inclusive of any 11th or 12th grader. So they include have. also our ESE students, uh, EBD self-contained students um, in that count? I, I, 
every kid is 11 or 12th grader that's <coughs> in okay. the account. But I would say this, we will not, I mean, to a point where we have students who need additional services from EBD, those students will remain within our county because Catapult would not have the services to provide them from wraparound and mental health. Okay, that's what I was going to yeah. ask you. Yeah, so, they are, so they will only service regular ed students? General education students. Well, they'll service they'll students have been, with disabilities, disabilities as well, yeah. depending on their level of need. Yeah, because it could be so. behavior disability, because they will do a lot of positive behavior supports in Catapult as well. So. But uh, nothing that nothing where it needs intense, mm -hmm. intense services. The school district will continue to protect those students because they have the opportunity to be here for 21 years of age, and will continue to provide supports internally. I think that we need to to look. Being I am involved in the EBD self-contained PLCs, and um, lots of those students who are carrying 10 credits and their 11th and 12th graders are actually students there. But we have no outlets for sure. them. We don't have any uh, program releases. For them to go into um, a work release sort of situation and we're very poor at, at taking those kids and not that they need a great deal of mental health services or ESD services they are stuck in seeing nothing in their future because I'm at 16 years old and I'm carrying four credits mm -hmm. and we never address those and AMI doesn't want them um, we have numerous times asked AMI to pick up some of these students and they will not pick them up and of course you're always worried because the parents at the end of the day can say no to this so you want an attractive situation the parents aren't going to say no to Orange Park High School's EBD unit which they're already satisfied with but we need to be able to have some way of setting those kids out to have a future I agree. and we don't. I agree. So, I understand what you're doing here, but I'd like us to, uh, you know, just to a little bit concentrate on, on our kids at 11th and 12th that are quite happy to be in our system, and we need to, to find a way to, to transport them out, to get them out, to get a mentorship in, yeah. and they're screaming for that at the high school level. Yeah. Every week they say something. Yeah. I, think, I think some, some type of VOTEC, we really in Clay don't talk a lot about <coughs> Exactly. vocational technical education I mean we do but we say it in a different way and we don't tout it for some of those kids you know 50 percent sure. of clay students don't go on to college right now that includes military sure. and some other things like that but that you know the ones that are going to go out and do the jobs and hey I'm all about you know the vice star academies and, and the culinary and things like that but the but the hands-on I'm thinking mostly you know some of our male students you know the yes. mechanics right. HVAC yes, that kind of stuff yes, where some of these kids wouldn't have the behavior problems if they I could agree. do something with sure. their hands instead of being forced to sit in the classroom. I happen to be the mother of a child that <laughs> would function much better in that environment. So I, I can yeah. All yeah. that we have never cultured. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and as a junior high counselor, I'll tell you, they scream for that. Yeah. That's all they want to do. That's yeah. where they want to focus on, and that's where the, the, they want to do. And we've just advocated all those jobs within Clay County themselves to, to other mm -hmm. people. Right. Instead of taking care of our own. So, absolutely agree. Um, I will look at, uh, well, as we transition to 17, 18, I will bring a plan to the board that has potential repurposing of schools. And with that, I'd love to do something as relates to a vocational school, if we can do it. It would be CTE driven. You're talking about like a magnet program? Almost like a choice. So it would have HVAC, electrician, plumbing, but I'd also, we got to determine side by side for performing visual arts. We can do one of those as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's more grant funding that we can go out there and get to better support us in this line. So we're going to work hard to do that, bless you. All right, any other questions? Okay. Thank you. So, uh, D2 is, um, this is uh, the item to um, rescind funding for Synovia Solutions Agreement. Can we ask questions <clears throat> at this, or do we wait until I'm... Yeah, this is for Because I've got a lot of questions. Sure. I've been doing due diligence. I mean, I have been spending the days on this. And I, I just, just simple questions. The first one being, obviously, the contract. Yeah. I mean... May I speak to that? Yeah. That would well, first off, if, 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 if you want to terminate the contract, okay, you have to do it at the end of the fiscal year. Okay. And the board has got to make a determination that it cannot afford to continue the contract. So the board has to make that determination at the end of the fiscal year and then terminate the contract. Does that guarantee that we won't be sued? Mm -mm. No, it does not. I would, I don't know what they're going to do, but I would bet there's going to be a lawsuit. 
The lawsuit basically will be for lost profits. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you throw in together the issue of attorney fees and cost, it will probably exceed the value of the contract. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, when I read the contract, it said that we are deferring the payment of this contract, and this is a contract that you'd requested mm -hmm. be sent out to us that Ms. Dr. Legutko said. So let me, I just want to, and I got it in a briefcase somewhere, but the bottom line was, according to the dates on the contract, Sonovia said that they were deferring the expenses of this first year so that we would not have to pay for the first year. But our, our commitment to this contract, our commitment to this, began July 1st of 2016. You are correct. Right. So we would minimum have to pay out $126,000, if yes, I'm not please. mistaken. Yes, that was the That was the base fee. And correct. that because it was deferring over the next four years, <clears throat> it would add an additional whatever, and that's why the 136 or whatever the number is over those next four years. You are correct. Please. Thank you. Okay, so I understood that. Next question. I'm going to point at you, Ms. Kirkus. Mm -hmm. You and and Miss and I know you can't speak for Miss Cedric and she's not here. You were, <coughs> and I didn't go back and watch and I should have. But, um, at our workshop when this came up, mm -hmm. you and Miss and Miss Cedric were both like wasn't in favor of this to begin with. Need to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Pretty adamant about it. Mm -hmm. Why? I didn't hear any whys. Why am I adamant about not wanting this program? Correct. Correct. I feel that it's a luxury we cannot afford. I did say that on the board floor. Okay, then I, I it's apologize a luxury for not going back afford. and looking. I feel that um, if the idea is great for it, if it worked accurately as it's supposed to. We've seen numerous occasions where it's not. Um, I heard that you are going to ride the bus, so you'll Three. see firsthand. Mm -hmm. I have ridden the bus. I've been on it before. Um, I'm not in favor of it. I never was. I think this is a an uh, exorbitant amount of money for something that we as a district can afford. Maybe down the road we could, but right now we can't. I would rather have seen us use that money towards different capital things, whether it be air conditioning, video cameras, the cafeteria, Doctors Inlet Elementary, some other capital funding is where I would have preferred to see that money go. We have a bus manual that they follow. Every driver has a route. They are to be within a six minute radius mm -hmm. of that time. If they're supposed to pick someone up at 910, they get there either <coughs> 907 to 913. We know where they are on their routes. They have radios that function, and I felt that that was adequate for our needs at the time based on the funding that we have. Okay. I'm still not in favor of it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. That was pretty um, obvious. Before. <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, I, I, there's no secret about it. The Correct. three times right. it came before us, I've spoken against it mm -hmm. every single time. Mm -hmm. um, if the board decides to keep it, then I'm hoping that they will, the transportation department and superintendent will work diligently to have this functioning at 100% the way that it was sold to us. And I'm unfortunately, it, and here's my understanding of this side as well, on the contract, it has, it's, it, I, I've been hearing through the times that I've come to meetings, through the times that I've sat in meetings, that we're not getting uh, street by street, turn by turn direction. Mm -hmm. And that's not part of the contract. Mm -hmm. It's not in the contract. I mean, the contract that I received did not specify turn by turn directions. So we're complaining about not having it, but that's not what we wanted. Or that's not what we ordered. I will look into it. I know the St. Lucie contract that we piggybacked off had turn by turn directions for substitute drivers. Okay. That's exactly what my understanding is. And so it's just for the substitute, not for. And, and, and correct. We tried to turn it on for the substitute drivers and it glitched all the other systems. So we're working with Sonovia now to try to unglitch that to figure out why it's doing it. Mm -hmm. Apparently, the other districts haven't had a problem with it, but uh, the, the uh, St. Lucie contract stipulated in there to piggyback that. off that it would be turn by turn direction for substitute drivers. You know, that's something that when you brought it to us, and Mr. Wormberg brought it to us prior to that, and they said we were piggybacking on St. Lucie's mm -hmm. contract, um, and it's in the back of mm -hmm. that um, there's a 30 day cancellation policy as for the contract St. Lucie has with us. 
I don't know. Um, I was under the impression we still have the 30 day cancellation until, you know, Ms. Legutko emailed this to all of us so that we could see it and then saw the 90 day. It's almost an airtight policy that we probably could not get out of if we wanted to, can we? So I guess what I need to, to ask is, um, Mr. Sykes, to make sure that we do this all as accurately as possible, um, what should the proper language be for this action item to try to rescind it? I if mean, you want to rescind it, and I, I wrote notes to <coughs> Mr. And Mr. Davis when I first talked about it, the board has got to make a determination that it cannot afford to continue the contract and terminates it at the end of the fiscal year. The problem then becomes is if we get sued, we have to prove that we can't afford to continue the contract. Um, there are certain things that would come into effect that I think would be valid defenses if we went under a 3%, if we had some fiscal problems with the governor coming in and looking at what we're doing financially, issues like that, that would support it. But to simply say, we don't have the money to afford to do this, probably wouldn't survive a lawsuit. Right. Well, and then we have to prove that Correct. we're in financial distress. Do you really want to make that public statement that our, our district is in I think we just have to prove that the funding, I mean. No, I don't no, think you have to prove financial distress. It has to be financial can, distress, can I that's how I read it. I, I wasn't aware of the letter that, that you sent. Can you explain? Mr. Davis asked me, Why? and I sent him, the, I sent him this morning. Did they They're, request something from what Sonoma? What they did is they requested, it, and I sent it to you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Warmberg, and sent, sent, sent me a request that they were asking as condition preceded opinion letter that we could validly legally enter into a contract. <laughs> so what I did is, if you take a look what they asked me to say and how I said it, I said it as blandly as possible, preserving us all the legal defenses. I basically stated the obvious aspects of the law. Mm -hmm. I gave them no more. And then I refer to our, our, our basically in the process of it. We have addendum A, which makes any dispute has got to be here in Clay County. We have valid defenses that come in with it. But when you get right down to it, if I wrote it any more bland, uh, then we wouldn't be able to get a contract. That's number one. Number two, uh, just because we're a governmental entity doesn't mean we can terminate contracts at will. I, the bulk of what I did in the Army was deployed as contract justice. Every government agency is bound to the contracts, and so we just can't willy-nilly terminate it. And then lastly, as I've discussed with uh, Carl and a number of people, I don't make the business decisions. All I do is I take a look at the legal aspects of it and the legality of it, and that's the only opinion I give. I've tried to avoid getting into everybody else's lane as to whether it's good business decisions. I don't get into whether it's good business decisions. I simply talk about whether it's legal or not legal. And, and, and it, if the question is, can we legally enter the contract and be bound by it, the answer is yes. This is a horrible contract, and, and I'm not pointing fingers at you, because this is a horrible contract. I mean, you recognize it, too, that we have entered into a contract that, I mean, we're, we're stuck with this. Is that how you look at it, that we will be stuck we're, with this? We're stuck with years? almost every contract yeah, that we yeah, have. I, of course, I, mean, I don't it's, see it's, how it's there, 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 there's, it, 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 You should be able to cancel a contract for something. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's the, the whole right? purpose of a contract. Absolutely, is, you should be able to cancel. I think, I think... Uh, it, Please, let him speak, Mary. No, I, I disagree. The whole purpose of, of contract is to make sure that both sides have protected legal rights. And, and to, to, to have a side that puts forth effort, uh, equipment, uh, personnel, and business, and then, then, then say, and then set the stuff to, to the side, and then say, we can terminate at will, that's not a contract. Uh, and, and so, no, I, I believe that government agencies are bound by contract just like private parties are. Uh, and, and what you do, it, it, you have these issues of equitable estoppel. Or people, and that's, I guarantee you what they would, would argue, and they've gone through all this stuff to entertain and fulfill and follow up the contract. They've had all this cost. Now, as I explained to Mr. Davis, if there was a lawsuit, in the course of the lawsuit, you know, they would be required to cover. And what that means is in the process of cover is they have to find other avenues and other streams of, of, of money to make up where our contract was not, was, was terminated. They have the ability and they have the duty to cover. But they would be entitled to lost profits, mm -hmm. and they would be entitled to attorney fees and costs as prevailing parties. So with this five-year contract, the only way that we could cancel this, in your legal opinion, would be if we proved or said that we are 
financial crisis. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we are locked in for five years. With this and it's got to be at the t end of the fiscal year. That's the other thing I, I, I shared with Mr. Davis and I talked to Mr. Mm -hmm. McGuck about. It can't be, you know, it can't be done right. until the end of fiscal year. Which if we were going to, <clears throat> if we were below our 3%, we were in financial crisis, this would be the time because we have to give 90 days written notice mm -hmm. with the sign affidavit from the superintendent to end it at the end of the fiscal year or cancel the contract as of the beginning of the fiscal year for 2017-18, right? Yes, ma'am. However, I would simply say that that, that Ms. Gilhouse's statement is correct and that we can say it, it doesn't mean necessarily we can prove it. If we're going to cancel, we have to prove it. And I'm, I'm just simply saying, and I, the board can make that determination. That's a fact determination that goes on the contract, and but, but that would be litigated. But it only can be done at the end of the fiscal year in, in, in accordance with the contract and we make a determination we can't afford it. That's the only way to try it. So, so what I said was correct as far as the 90-day notice and canceling it at the end of... Right, but I, but, I, but I want to be clear that, that that doesn't necessarily mean that we can terminate it the, because the, the, of the, the legalities of it. I understand what you're saying and thank you for clarifying it for me. I wasn't sure um, after reading through it. It's a very confusing contract. I've, I'm wondering why Robert Warnberg's initials are even on here when it seems to me that it should have been the superintendent or the chairman of the board who who initialed page three on it. Um, it just seems confusing to me. That was when he was acting as the, in the purchasing and contracts role last yeah. year. Yeah. It's just an RW down there, but it seems mm -hmm. odd to me that it's Robert's signature. Was Robert working in... Purchasing at the time also. Yes, he yeah. was the acting so director the, at the time. Versus, you know, so he's the actually. director of transportation and in business affairs handling yeah. the at contract. The time, what um, is this, his brother's company? No. <laughs> actually, actually, it started under Nancy Racine. <laughs> actually, it was Nancy. So actually, I have done quite a bit of research too. I rode my bus yesterday and I've done a whole lot of groundwork. And actually, Synovia is the leader in GPS systems in transportation for all types of buses, not just school buses. And in fact, these systems are standard issue on all new Bluebird buses. And they call it Bluebird something, they have, some, they have a, a name that they, um, but they, they have, they believe that Snowbia is the leader. Now that doesn't mean it's the system we have, nor the contract that we signed. I, I How told- did you find it worked yesterday? Well, I told, um, I told the driver yesterday. I, um, I think it's extremely cumbersome for the drivers. So what I think is, but there's a lot of good that can come from it. It is definitely um, individual in how much the driver wants to put in. <laughs> so, so if the driver learns their system really, really well, and they know it, and they learn their kids, especially their high school kids, uh, the Keystone High School kids, they whip out those IDs, they scan them as they come on, and there is no... There's not any more delay. In fact, the driver never has to take their eyes off the road because the students are doing it all. So a little bit of it is behavior modification of our students. So, I mean, you know, as in, it, in anything else, when we went to lunch numbers, when you had to start, you know, when we went to electronic lunch, when there wasn't actual money changing hands and they're opening their little change purse, you know, they had to learn their lunch number. Now most of them know their lunch number, they go through, and their number never changes. Um, it's when we start having the drivers input things. In fact, Synovia has RFID technology where you can have an RFID chip in the student's ID and when they walk through the door of the bus, it loads if the student's on the bus. And then it loads if the student gets off the bus. So for when you have the parent call up and say, my five-year-old didn't get off at daycare or it didn't get off at the babysitter, we know they got off our bus. So there's some actual real huge benefits. Um, but we don't have that yet. We don't have that we, you know, we would be. We would have to okay. figure out. So yes. I, I think the implementation of it was horrific, was horrible. And I don't know whether that was on our part, Synovia's part, or a combination. My guess is a combination. I've launched huge projects before, and the, it, how you sell it is really a lot. You know, how you get buy-in from the customer, from who's using it. And the real users that we needed to get buy-in from were the drivers. Yes because they have the most effort to put in that they haven't put in. Some concerns I have, 
is that we're not doing, and maybe this is, um, Mr. Merrill, you, maybe the year's not over yet, so maybe their information was incorrect, but we're not doing ride-alongs this year for evaluations from bus drivers. We're taking all that information off of the screen, at, or off of the tablet. The tablet provides great information. One of the reasons the drivers don't want it, and they've admit, they readily admit it, um, is it tells how fast, how hard they brake, how fast they drive, how, when they turn their turn signal, signal on, when they put their air brake on, it, it literally gives all information that we would want because they're driving other people's children. So those that information. They call it Big Brother. They don't like it. But I, my understanding is there's actually been one driver who was driving fast enough that if a police officer had been behind him or her, they would have been given three points on their license. They were speeding so much. And, mm -hmm. and that um, because the system detected that, they were able to do some disciplinary counseling as appropriate. We don't want our, our drivers um, speeding. I think, again, the cumbersomeness of what we have has made it difficult. Additionally, they showed me their training. Um, I think we could do a lot for our drivers by spending a little bit of extra money, paying them for an extra in-service or two, and letting them have um, train the training train the trainer sessions or some way to get more training on this because what they were given was a four by five laminated two-sided piece of paper that's that is literally it's a, it's a little bit smaller than my notebook and it's um mm -hmm. and they and it's the screens and y'all know i'm always having to pull these out now and i put on my reading glasses and i had trouble reading it so when you're sitting in the in a in the dark, if you're a high school driver, you're sitting in the dark mm -hmm. on a dark street. If you have a concern yeah. about it, you're not going to be. You're having to tr turn the lights on. You're sitting. So some of the concerns the um, employees told us um, were not there were were valid. And I told the employees yesterday. I said, look, the first time this came when I was on the board, it came once before I was on the board. Uh, the second time it came, I didn't vote for it. The third time, I did vote for it. And there had been some incidences, I think Mrs. Driggers has said several times <coughs> that she has come to speak to us about some incidences that happened that were of concern. <coughs> Those were things that, excuse me, <coughs> that had me um, interested in this kind of a system. Um, one of the main ones was that panic button. And that panic button's not on the screen at all, ever. And they don't even, the drivers didn't say that I talked to, and I talked to almost all the drivers in the Keystone area, none of them even knew that panic button existed. So that was a concern. The turn-by-turn -turn directions, they said actually would be very valuable, that there's times, and I could hear on the radio while I was writing, um, that, that someone would, maybe someone called in, and they mm -hmm. needed to pick up an extra route. Mm -hmm. So you would then become a substitute driver without actually being a substitute driver. Right. And to be able to have the turn-by-turn in that arena would be extremely valuable because they, they know the route kind of, but they don't know that route exactly. That's not something they're going to know the time frames on. They may have a paper on it, but they may not because there were several times on the radio yesterday where they had some issue and they were calling somebody, hey, can you pick up such and such route? And it was an additional route. So I think that could be valuable, but we don't have that. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing that I think that we have really, that I thought was a great idea, and in fact, um, if you'll indulge me, I'll pull out, I took a picture of it yesterday on, on um, Facebook, I had the, is the Here Comes the Bus app, mm -hmm. and I saw a, a, a former, she's a former Clay County teacher, she's now a mother in the Oak Lake area, she apparently does some kind of a, a blog, and uh, the, the looks like, I don't know what the, oh wait, here's, the blog is called uh, some kind of parenting special needs .org. Um, Anyway, she contributes bi-monthly articles for something called Bridging Apps. So they're apps for parents and they, they do reviews. And she said, one Clay parents with a child that rides the bus. I highly recommend the he free Here Comes the Bus app. My junior high child rides the bus and using the app this school year has brought peace of mind. The app tracks the bus in real time. We know when the bus is about to arrive, when the bus arrives safely at school, and when she is about to get off the bus in the afternoons. Um, and if you, that's, um, I can email out the, the link to that if anybody wants to go and look at it. So um, 
I think that the Here Comes the Bus app could be great for our parents. We didn't we didn't really launch it because really this this launched at the right as school was starting, and so at that time we should have done a huge rollout, you know, on one clay, telling parents. And even now we could do a huge marketing campaign. Parents that you know set up your geofence, set up your and it and and it's personalized, and that doesn't have to have the child scan in. So I think we can use some different features in different ways um, to make it what I thought I was voting for. And that's the biggest thing is I don't feel like what we have today is what I voted for. That's the so, biggest problem. So I, I do agree. agree. And can I add one to, to your statement? If there's deficiencies in the contract and we're not getting the benefit of the bargain, then we need to specify what we're not getting and we need to hold them accountable. Now, if that is the issue that they breach the contract, then you can terminate for based upon breach. But I've not heard anything yet about breach. And so, and if you want to go about that process, then you start holding their feet to the fire on the terms of the contract, saying you're not doing this, you're not doing this, we need this, we need this, we need this. And then they fail to do it. Then, by way of their conduct, you can say you breached the contract, therefore we're terminating. That's an entirely different thing. Right. But, what the, the, but to do that, you need to specify, you need to set forth the record by correspondence or otherwise saying, this is what we've expected, this is what you promised to do, you failed to do it, I need you to fix this. And so you have to give them the opportunity to repair, they fail to repair, then you can say you've materially yeah. breached it, and, then, and then, then you can terminate the contract because they have breached it. Well, that's what it says, and it can be 30 days prior to the notice to the vendor. Um, contract, core, tr core track and trace, which is basically GPS knowing where the bus is at a particular time. Comparative analysis, what they're doing is comparing, looking at the amount of fuel that were being consumed, etc. Time and attendance, when the bus is supposed to be there, has the bus arrived, is the child on the bus? I'm, I'm reading into these, but this is the, the software that we purchased. Student ridership verification and parent portal, here comes the bus. Okay. So those are the those are the five things that on this contract that were purchased. Now, piggybacking to what you're saying, I went also to the bus center in Middleburg, stopped and talked with a few people in maintenance as well because I was lost. We could talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> um, but going to that, I, I was amazed, and I have to say I met with Mr. Wernberg first, got his background, sat down and talked with him. His background is in purchasing, his background is in transportation, um, and I was like, fine dandy. I just, and I hadn't realized that Mr. Wortham had hired him. I, I was like, oh, okay, got that. Um, and then he said, let me just show you where the offices are, and I'm stepping out. So he was not standing there going, what are you going to be saying? It was nothing like that. To a fault. <laughs> I had, then there were bus drivers there as well, who had just finished, because I got there at mm, probably about 8, 9, 8.30. By the time he and I stopped talking, some of those bus routes were done, some of the bus drivers were coming in. And I stopped them, and I said, what do you think? And one response was, I don't like these newfangled ideas. How long have you been driving bus? 24 years. What do you drive? ESC. How many kids are on your bus? Six. Okay, I got it. I understand where, yeah, it might be a real hassle. Obviously for that. This, the next bus driver that came up looked at me and said, it saved my butt. <laughs> I looked at her and I said, excuse me? And she said, basically, I had a parent who was calling and saying that I had not been at, at that stop at the time that I was indicated, and they had documented information that said wrong. Um, going to the routers, they were, obviously, they were all at the meeting the other night, and many of them were, they were very much in favor of it. Um, going to the people, it, there's a there's a portable that's got the routers in it, and I can't remember all of the the, the names of all of the different organizations or people and what their jobs are, but they're all sitting there, and it's a beehive of activity, and the comments that they get from outsiders coming in saying your bus was speeding, and being able to say no, actually our bus was going this amount at that time, and if you were going past that bus at the time, you, sir, were speeding. Also, this bus was doing whatever. Well, that numbered bus isn't even in our system. Happened to be a bus from another county. I mean, there are all sorts of complaints that they get. They're all experienced bus drivers. I didn't realize that. 
that they get hired from within. And some of those same people, the woman who's in charge of this whole portable is sitting there, has been a bus driver for years and years and years, very much in favor of the system based on the ease in which they're able to operate, the ease in which they are able to continue their jobs, do it effectively, etc. And in a teasing manner, I was going to look at her and say, oh yeah, you, you miss driving a bus. Before I could even say that, she said, and in a pinch, I still drive a bus because we still need subs and we still need bus drivers and I'll go out if they need me. And to a fault, every one of these people still maintains their driving license and their experience with this. You are concerned about the cost. We're talking 100, I'll say 126,000. I know it's more than that, $156,000 per year. That is about 1% of our transportation budget. It's spent by the, it's paid for by the transportation budget. In your information, Mr. Davis, you provided us the fact that we've already saved $28,000 on fuel. Mr. Warrenberg <laughs> said we've already saved the number of buses that we're sending out. What about the number of lawsuits we might have avoided? <laughs> Not just the number of lawsuits that we're also avoiding, but then I took it then to the county office. And I said, how does this affect anybody here? It affects the amount of insurance that we have to pay. So now the insurance costs are going to go down mm -hmm. because we have fewer buses on the road. And you know, I was sitting back saying, okay, yeah, it's helping, you know, five or six people. I, I, I was on your side of the table. I'll be perfectly honest. I was it's, like, it's the, the let's get rid of it. This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Having, and I'm not done because yeah, this is I not want action, to talk. So we're no, not, it is not. not. And I am voting. not done. But I am seeing that there are benefits. And what my goal is by next Thursday, if this is mean, if this continues on the agenda, and I'm wondering if we should put it off until the end of the year, but we need to do the 90 days. I, I'm sitting here going, I knew it this, whatever. I want to literally build myself a pro list and a con list. And there are some cons that I keep hearing about that I want to pursue as well. Not just with the bus drivers, but with the technicians. And to find out. One of the other things I said was, you know, this is an aftermarket add-on. So it is going to add some difficulty. It's going to be glitchy. Um, and yes, you can buy buses with this already built in, like you can buy buses with televisions in them, and you can buy buses with all sorts of wonderful things. One of the directions that I asked Mr. Warrenberg, I said, can we in the future as a board say, you need to do due diligence in purchasing buses with air conditioning? Well, you know, and the, the key that's, that sold me on that, do you realize we do 4,000 field trips a year? 4,000. And I'm like, that's where we need air conditioning. It's not for the little morning. I'm sorry, am I talking too much? It's oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just, I just, I just I'm like, I, 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 go ahead. Mr. Sykes, thank you for clarifying the yes, thank you. on this. I'm sorry I have to go. Um, I won't be here for the workshops on the <coughs> work journey. You guys are free to have your conversations with your artists. <laughs> um, Thank you, Mr. Sykes. One other, one other um, glitchy thing that was a concern that I think, um, Mr. Miro, you'll want to look into, Mr. Sykes, if you can go on. Oh, excuse me. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Was, um, is that if we're going to link it through the payroll system, um, there are times when it, it doesn't necessarily load up. So then they're told, they, you know, they call in, they say it wouldn't take my login or whatever. And so um, then they're told, okay, next time you stop or when that route's over or whatever, try logging in again. Mm -hmm. If we're going to log it to the payroll system, the employees have the concern about yeah. being paid. Mm -hmm. They're being mm -hmm. um, And it adds up. And that's in the but six hours. But it, when that. it's added on to the, to the Bluebird buses, it's not a luxury. So it's not an upgrade. It's just like if you buy a standard equipment on there. It's like buying a car yes. now. Yeah. You're going to get But one question that came up yeah. for me that kind of piggybacks onto this um, that I think would be valuable for the board to know is we do spend an awful lot of money when we buy a new school bus. How often is that put out for bid? I, I, I thought that I'd heard in the past that we do that as a piggyback. Yeah, on the state contract. Okay, but, but could we get a better deal if we bought them on our own? Could we negotiate, you know, because um, some, because the, the reason is our drivers talk to other drivers. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, 
Putnam County is the poorest county in the state, almost the nation, and it um, they, all of their buses are air conditioned. Bradford County, How all of their buses have, are though? air conditioned. They have a lot less. They have mm -hmm. less. Yeah, they're a smaller county, less students than us. We are known for having one of the nicest fleets in the state. That's but a feather know, in the cap of our maintenance staff and that kind of thing. But if we aren't able to be competitive in that arena, and you know, it comes to mind, and I don't even know if this is legal, I guess I could have asked Mr. Sykes this, but could we add on an extra $2 to each of those field trips and pay for air, air conditioning on a bus or something? I think parents would, I think parents would contribute in such ways. They'd rather do that than pay more on their taxes that go to, you know, other stuff. And I think that that's been perceived, that's been looked at in the past, and it's not and there's a, something a different that can cost. be done. If you remember, um, I think Mr. Warmberg might have quoted us this between a 75 or 60, mm -hmm. 68 mm -hmm. children bus and an 80 something. Yeah. So I know St. John's County runs the, the larger buses. Yeah. You know, maybe that's something with the routes that a larger buses down the road would be more economic for us. And, and I think Robert has, over the past couple of years of last year, you know, we used to buy 65 passenger buses. I think he's going to 77 passenger buses. Right. Right. Try to be Start more beneficial. Can you clarify something for me as well? Did he say that most of the new buses now also come equipped with cameras? Yes, ma'am. Every new bus we're buying since a couple of years ago. He has been equipped with a camera already. Right. With so a that was, because I under, I remember hearing that that was one of the concerns as well. Why don't we have cameras? Yeah. Why don't we have air conditioning? Why don't we, you know, and it's, and it's. And they rotate them when there's an incident, then they'll put a camera bus in. Right, Although right, Although he right, did right. say nine times out of ten, once they move the camera bus, the, there's no problem. Right. So, okay. so if they, they had it there, would not be much better. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. Before we move on, Ms. Gilhausen, was there anything you wanted to add? I know we've kind of monopolized yeah, the conversation. I so, appreciate it. Um, I'm looking forward to it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Davis, let's move along. Yes, ma'am. Whatever y'all want me to do, I'll do. You know what? I will make just one small <laughs> introduction. Try to get a word just my little bit of concern about having this item um, for decision this month is we're changing attorneys. Yeah. Would you so, prefer to move this to the March meeting really when we would. have a whatever our full time attorney is going mm -hmm. to be? Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that if you mm -hmm. gives you more time to do your chart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can move this to March. I Let's move it to March. Yeah. Give that Let's a turn and put it on the March agenda. Yeah, I'm fine with that. If, um, okay. But that was good conversation. So it's mm -hmm. eye opening. Can you start getting into more stuff? Mm -hmm. All right. So we go to uh, D3, which is Special Action 8. If you have any questions, you can see me or you can see mm -hmm. Mr. Brosky. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and that's something we wouldn't be discussing here. That's we correct. just talk, talk mm -hmm. about Mr. Uh, D4, same thing. Uh, D5 is selection of the school board attorney. Did you ever hit the questions? I got them from Andrew Messina last night. I'm just going to review them with Mr. Davis to make sure that he's comfortable with them. And Mr. Brodsky will put a rubric together and send it out to all of us tonight. Okay, when you so, say rubric, it's not a, uh, are we scoring each question? Or how are you encouraging that? So can I, can I just challenge that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, what I was, all due respect, let's, Mr. Davis is not the decision maker, the board is, right. so it, so I don't really know why. <coughs> and, and being comfortable with the questions would be, it really needs to be us being comfortable with the questions. I totally agree with you. Um, and wanted to run them by Mr. Davis and Mr. Brodsky because they've done this interviewing process more than we have. Um, and they'll be sent out tonight. There's, I think there were like nine or ten questions. We'll go through and we'll have like a timed amount of response, maybe three minute response, two minute response, something like that. Nothing is all that. So that then we can all ask any of our own questions. And um, Andrew Messina's recommendation was we each ask the same question of each candidate. Okay. And then afterwards, whatever different questions you have, so that if you had other questions that weren't on the list that she recommended, uh, what's your favorite color? I mean, it wouldn't be something that simple, but you could then ask, and we'll go through one question at a time. So we won't do it like we do our comments, where we start with one board member and they go through 20 things because we don't want any one board member monopolizing the remaining time. So we'll rotate a bit, you know, come with whatever. So I'll set, they'll be sent out tonight, whatever you think you want to ask in addition. They're generic type of questions. Um, you know, what's the specialty? 
what kind of case law do you specialize in? Mm -hmm. what, right. would, what do you feel that you would have to possibly contract out? Generic questions like that. Uh, her final one was what makes you the most qualified candidate? Um, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Nothing that was anything, um, you know, and you'll see, I'll send them all to you tonight. Is there anything you're really opposed to? Send so, me an email. This is our opportunity to ask what we want mm -hmm. to, and I want to make sure that we have time for those other questions that weren't on her standard. This is what we recommend you ask. So, <coughs> and, and we'll do um, the interviews Thursday and Friday, mm -hmm. but we won't have any discussion. And um, because it is a workshop and the community can ask questions, the community will not ask questions of any of the candidates. It would be at the end of when the candidates leave that the community can question us, ask a question of us, but the interview is done by the five of us. And, and, uh, and so anything you, you think you want to... So, okay, we don't discuss anything after the last interview. No, we, we do it on the board discuss. floor. Yeah. We can discuss the workshop. Well, we can. We can. I guess I just kind of thought it would be inappropriate of us to be discussing the candidates before actually taking a vote. We're in a workshop. Yeah, we, we can, can if you want. I That's was going to say that I've been, I've, sorry, I was scheduling time mm -hmm. on Friday morning for that because I just assumed that we would be discussing mm -hmm. what we had heard, what our, mm -hmm. I mean, initial reactions. I mean, we're not, mm -hmm. it's not going to be, we're only down to four now. Yeah. And, uh, And that was Andrea's recommendation for the February 2nd meeting to, when we get to selection of school board attorney, Let's each take two or three minutes and just tell our initial reaction of where we want to go. Because I asked, how would we handle this? Normally, we have a motion and a second before we can have discussion. She said we would not do it that way. We would go around for an <coughs> reaction. If it seemed like everybody was totally divided, then we have further discussion. If everybody was in favor of one particular, then someone could go ahead and make a motion and move forward at that point. Do you have a motion at the workshop? No, 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 that was at the school board meeting. Yeah. So in other words, we're going to save all of our discussion for the following Thursday to make a decision for the lawyer that we're, the attorney that we're going to hire. It's pretty much how it's... I would prefer to have some discussion during a workshop before that. Mm -hmm. And for good reason. There's, when we're, I mean, we're making this decision as a team. We're making this decision together. What you say can directly influence what my decision is going to be. I may not have heard somebody say something that you heard them say. You may have heard something completely different than I heard. And that happens. That's what communication is. And if we have the opportunity in a workshop on Friday that we have open time where we can talk, and we can and, and discuss. And we can absolutely do that. And it's not going it's to what be. what we want as that's a board. That's what so. I would like. I, that, I'm just, I'm speaking from personal feelings. Mm -hmm. I mean, right, quite I seriously. You, this is. It gives you a week before you have to make a decision. And then I can right. consider what everyone and has honestly, said. And honestly, I can't I'll come go back, back and call you after the interviews. Right. Because, I mean, I do well, that. Well, sure. But I, I mean, but the discussion that we have. What did that person say? What the importance is from this perspective or from this perspective or from your perspective. I'm fine. We can do that if that's what the board wants. Absolutely. I would like that. I would like to allow some time after um, the last candidate to please. Okay, so let's plan discuss. on Friday after. I you think for we're an hour. I mean, whatever. It's an 10, extra hour. Nine to ten to ten to eleven. Ten to ten to twelve. Ten to eleven. Eleven to twelve is okay. what's scheduled right now. Friday. Okay. I'm going to bring it to your attention. I did receive an email from David Degada, mm -hmm. one of the candidates, and he would like to move his interview to Friday. Since we're meeting this morning, I kind of held off there. If he told me no, wow. he, would, he would rearrange his schedule and I'll simply email him back, which would then mean we have 9 and 10 on Thursday. Okay. Friday morning, we're reading at Charles E. Bennett from 8 to 9, and I'm already scheduled for 1.20 at Tynes Elementary. I think Mrs. Studdard is scheduled before me. I will email him back. Yes. I didn't respond because I wasn't sure how long I said I could take. make it in the afternoon, but right. I haven't heard any response from that. She person. emailed me this morning, so she's probably mm -hmm. emailed all of us. Mm -hmm. um, let's just see if I, he can reschedule his. I will email calendar. him to keep his schedule the same. Two and two. I, I kind of like that it was two and yes. two, honestly. So. Um, so just, if I if I could, just a couple things in that package, is at least five references. A sample of legal writing and their bar history. A couple things about that. 
whatever the candidate gave me, I simply printed and put in there. Some thought a legal sample was one, some thought it was two, some thought it was six. Whatever they sent, I copied and put in there. Just as a reminder, and I know you all know this, any questions related to any uh, protected class, such as a person's age, their medical history, all of that, totally off limits oh, yeah. in, in, in questioning. So. I just wanted to remind you of that before we started. Well, thank you for compiling all of this for us. I appreciate that you got it. It does help us to see, you know, every little bit that we can get will help us to make a decision. So, um, did anybody have anything else before the superintendent moves on to the next item? I would just say retrospectively, we should have had a I'm sorry? I, I would say retrospectively, at our last meeting, we should have kept our comments about the individual candidates to ourselves. I, I think um, I just wasn't real happy with the way that discussion went, and it escalated. And um, part of me wonders if that's why we had several candidates withdraw their name, mm -hmm. because I don't believe that we behaved as professionally as we should as a board. We were there to discuss the structure of the interviews, not the individual mm -hmm. candidates themselves. So I just wanted to use that as a teaching moment. Yes. And Please. Mm -hmm. I agree with that 100%. Mm -hmm. All right. Mr. Superintendent? Yes, I'll say that uh, Mr. Brodsky has done a good job. If there's anything that you need uh, me and staff to do, we'll uh, help you anyway. So. All right, D6 is um, it is the public uh, approval for amendments of uh, policy, board policy 406 and 407, which is pretty much provisions for uh, foster care and homeless. We advertised last month, and this is just the actual policy change that, that have been identified. So. And it just separates the two, and they used to be kind of uh, integrated and married together. So now it, it, it gives value to both. What, through the two, um, yes. what is this concerning exactly? All this does is just separates um, the ability for us to um, to make sure we're providing the right services for our students, and it and it takes homeless structure and put and puts it by themselves, and it identifies what. Um, what needs that we'll need to be able to support them to either come to our school, support them within our school, how we interact with them, at the same time for foster care. So it takes foster care and homeless and it just separates them. Where it used to be lumped in one, it's now showing the value of both of them. And I think it has some very explicit items that are related to each of those cohorts of students and how in new language about how we, we go about interacting and supporting them with education. And is this um, something that came down from? Yes, ma'am. <coughs> this is. So, so we're in compliance. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. This is fully extended. Thank you. All right, D7. D7, um, I'm bringing to the board to ask for us to look at, uh, to approve a supplemental spot survey for a current educational plan survey. Um, and uh, a number of reasons. Uh, we have, uh, in 2003, I believe, state statute required that we look at any portable that is 20 years or, or older and we start to repurpose them. We have a total of 942 portables within our school district, around 780 or 20 years or older. So this gives us a point where we can try to repurpose uh, some of our portables and start to move and transition to standalone buildings in the future. Um, uh, this will do a number of things. It will assist with, um, uh, it will, will be transparent view and increase utilization. Mm -hmm. And increased utilization allows us to create opportunities to build and also create opportunities to expand schools where, where we can and could if we had the need and also if we had the finances to do so. I will be honest with you, trans the portables are, have zero value bill, you know, they are worth maybe 10 to $100, I would say. How, how does it increase utilization? Because it becomes, it comes off of the like classroom. Class yeah, just, yeah, it's no longer. But exactly. where are we going to put the students? We will have, we have room and utilization in our schools. We do have, uh, we just have to make sure that we are, if we have a room for a, um, let's just say a coach or an ESE, you know, teacher, standalone uh, classroom that's just using for those individuals, then we will have to make that a, a, an actual classroom in need. So coaches will have to find uh, other areas to plan collectively, and uh, we will find other areas to repurpose to meet with students as need um, for uh, support services. So um, I, I would say that uh, it, it will, on paper, increase utilization. I am confident that we have spaces available within our schools in order to accommodate this. Can I just throw out a question? Yeah. Let's say we have a portable, and it is assigned to two ESE teachers. Yeah. I'm just using this as a sure. what if. Yeah. 
Um, and those ESC teachers are going to the inclusion classrooms. Right. All right. But periodically, and you know, some would look at that and say, "Well, that's their office. That's their yeah. that's their mm -hmm. classroom, whatever." Um, but there are times when, because of that pullout or t testing, yeah. shall we say, or whatever, sure. they need those spaces then to bring students right. into those portables. Are those portables considered not being used as a classroom per se? You know what I'm saying? Sure. Yes, ma'am. Um, the portables would be redesignated as general school space okay. and, and available to the school to be used for What's a multitude that? of things. And they're still satisfactory and they're right. still in satisfactory condition. They're still livable mm -hmm. as, it, as mm -hmm. it were. Um, but we could do a lot of things with them, making computer labs. Right now, we, you know, uh, mm -hmm. computer labs, labs gobble up a lot of permanent classroom space in mm -hmm. the buildings. You know, these could be computer labs. Uh, they could be uh, a small one-on-one -on -one pullout type. Uh, right. That's that's right now, we're, we're, mm -hmm. we're gobbling up again a whole classroom for uh, a one-on-two type of thing. These could be used for that. Uh, mm -hmm. They could be used for, I know some of our smaller schools, older schools, Montclair, Dr. Zinley, sure. their administration areas are extremely small. Mm -hmm. And they always hit me up for portables to use as office spaces, as conference rooms. Right. These portables could be uh, could be used for that. They're still satisfac in satisfactory condition. They're still livable. They can mm -hmm. still be used. Uh, can they be used as classrooms? Not technically, but I'm not a portable police, and I'm not going to go out there and check all of these portables and make sure there's no classrooms in there. Well, well, we might, and, and until we transition. Yeah. Yeah. Having worked, literally, my portable was moved from W.E. Cherry to Argyle, mm -hmm. and it was perfect because I didn't have to pack. I just said, put everything down in the middle, and I'll pick it up and move it for you. I was like, cool beans. And that portable was really nice. Yeah. Didn't have a bathroom in it. Did not have running water in it. There were some obviously that, but it was it, it's solid. <coughs> and when I left here, when I left Argyle, I was in one of the new portables with the seam down the middle. Yes, ma'am. And a few, <laughs> and I did have running water and I did have a bathroom, which I very much appreciate. Don't get me wrong, um, but they're real different. Yeah. But we, we looked on yeah. Gov deals and we tried to sell these, we'd get $100 going yeah, exactly. on the plus um, they're, 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 they're valuable things that the, that the principals can use at their schools for, for other than classrooms. Good. And, okay. and I would say this is not going to all happen at once. It'll be multiple, multiple years that so we have to phase in and out. And then I would say this, we as we start to transition in, in this administration, you'll start to see some reboundering proposals that we'll bring mm -hmm. that may be able to help in so many different ways. So. so the ultimate goal is to increase our utilization so that we can build a new school that we need, we know we need, but we don't need the utilization from the state. We're right there on the threshold of it. Okay. And this go. also, it also allows us to, to, to repurpose and the, the older portables which we're required to do that we haven't yes. done. Okay. Talk to you about funding. Yeah, so um, I guess you want me to go to the next one? Well, it's all, uh, it's yeah. part of this. Well, okay, okay. So, what yeah. else on here are you are you changing? I mean, you mentioned mm -hmm. Dr. Zinla cafeteria. Yeah. So this so it goes to the funding. Right. So now yeah. it's uh, it's yeah, it's it's, mm -hmm. it's going to cost twenty million dollars. Uh, that the, the, the reconstruction you want to do at all the elementary schools mm -hmm. to accommodate getting rid of the portables? If I was reading that correctly. Yeah, it does. Um, so you want to speak to that? It's well, just, it was, you know, seven million dollars at this school, five million at that. Like, I, I'd like to see a full cost analysis for what we're looking to spend here in this project to build portables and build a school. I would say, yeah. Uh, and, and there are some projects that will be delayed a year. You know, I'm, I'm, I can get together about twenty-five million dollars over this year and next year. But most of that is impact fees that we've got sitting in the bank. It's Fifteen million dollars. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so 15, but I, I would, I would go back and say that. There's not an actual need right now in most of these schools to actually build. So as much as it, if we were going to build a wing here, or there, I, we, there's n there's none of the schools right now other than the Oakleaf area mm -hmm. that we believe that it is going to be a big push to, to build and grow. Um, so this still takes us. I mean, it's going to increase uh, our utilization, you know, by two or three. It could be four percent in some areas, mm -hmm. but this not to a point where we think that we're going to put ourselves in, uh, uh, in in a position where we are not going to have enough classrooms to be to host our students and be functional as it relates to class size. So, so does that does that negate the? I, th I think it was Keystone. Elementary, Dr. Sunlight Elementary, yeah. and one other yeah. that yeah. were there's, there's three. Cafeteria. Yeah, so I so I'll go into it. This is um, 
This would allow us to potentially build. We know that there's a major need in the area of oak leaf. Um, one area is uh, we know that uh, plantation oaks is an area that's uh, sitting at high utilization or uh, above 92 or 93 percent. We know that uh, Oak Leaf Village is around 86, 87 percent as well. We know that um, Nature's Hammock is Nature's Forest, 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 Forest Hammock. Forest Hammock. I live in Nature's Hammock. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Forest Hammock is continuing to build out a high number of houses uh, within looking at two to three hundred houses in the in the coming years. And um, I believe it's Harbor Mills. Harbor Mills. Harbor Mills as well. And, and, and we're going to really face an issue in that area. Now, we can say that um, we don't want to use impact funds, which is where we have $15 million in. By repurposing some of our affordables, allows us to use um, uh, additional capital funding in order to, to purchase. Uh, to purchase everything in cash. We do not go into debt for this like we've done in the past. Um, now that does do a number of things. That puts um, Dr. Zimlet's cafeteria on pause. It puts Keystone on pause and Charles E. Bennett's cafeteria on pause. That means that we're looking at a uh, probably a two-year stint of trying to recoup money and, and really being able to move forward with the uh, the, the new re repurposing of funding to make sure that we um, update the cafeterias as requested and as needed within this organization. Um, but I do believe if we do decide not to build, which I personally believe we should build, then we're going to have to reboundary students and you're going to have kids that are in half a mile radius and walk into the Oak Leaf area. You're going to have them going all the way back to Argyle as presented. That's the only, the only the only solution that we have. Is that correct? Those two? So, yeah. so yeah. Mike, if I'm hearing you correctly, our choice is build old elementary school wide or expand these three cafeterias? No, in no, order no. to build elementary wide, we have to postpone. Postpone. Oh, okay. so that's not really a postponement because i got to tell you. If they desperately need it. They, um, I mean, no, I don't from, from a political standpoint, sure. you thought we had a lot of Oak Leaf parents there that night? You, I mean, the the parents that you'll have from across the county. Sure. You know, I mean that because one of the whole thing, one of the things that you hear is you're gonna now every everything's gonna go to one area. Sure. No, of the county, understood. and um, you don't just hear that from parents; you hear it from the builders. Yeah. Right. Whose impact these came from. Right. Yeah, and so it's gonna be you know the the Green Cove per parent who built a house and paid and and built on land they owned or the Keystone parent who sure. built on land they owned, so they had to stroke the check for 9000 to Clay County, and then their impact fees are going to build a, a new school, which they don't fault us that sure. we need, they believe we need, yeah. and they can't eat lunch with their child unless they sit outside. Sure. So a majority of the year, they can't eat lunch with their child. Or their child has to sit, I mean, Sure. I, I know you've been uh, and I, yeah. I, you know, I go in and volunteer at Keystone Elementary and open milk cartons and ketchup yes, packets and stuff like that and just, you, you can't, they lift their arm to eat and they're like this because they're shoved in there so hard. Sure. I mean, it's not, we're not talking about, I don't think, luxuries sure. for those kinds of things. So I, I would challenge how we can find a way to not, I mean, to postpone two years. We're already through this year. So it would sure. be, you know, we're really looking at 2019, 2020. Potentially. Yes, ma'am. So this is exactly why I brought it to, to, to the board. Um, I do believe um, that there is a need to build an oak leaf. I, I do not discredit there's a need to, to expand the, the lunch rooms as well. I think it's a, it, it's a high priority. But, um, you know, I, I, I don't think it's sound for us to move kids, you know, from oak leaf who are half a mile within the walking distance from their school and put them in Argyle. I don't think it's sound decision educationally. Now, you, you, are, you are, everybody on this table has the right to, to vote in the direction that you think is best for this county, and I'll support whatever that um, that you think that uh, that you implement. Um, but I want to be very honest about where my stance is from an educational outlook, and, and I want to do all of it. <laughs> I wish I could, um, you know. But financially, uh, to be transparent, there's there's no way you can get that done in the next two years. Would you say? I agree with you. Yeah, the school be, be up like, in that Oakleaf area, I mean, we all know how go. they're busting at the seams. And a lot of it depends on what you know. Our our plan is to repurpose or reuse the Coppergate plan. So, mm -hmm. uh, and that's it been a, that's a been a uh, reliable school. It's been relatively maintenance free, mm -hmm. so we're going to reuse that. That's going to save us that save us money there. Um, 
and yet a lot of it depends on what the bids come in at when we go to build. So, mm -hmm. you know, if they come in lower, you know, I've, I've tried to shelter about 25, almost $26 million between this year and next year you know, with anticipated another $3 million that we can use, 3 or $4 million in impact fees that we can use and, and scale back some of the, uh, the, the capital projects. Uh, but if the bids come in lower than what I expect, then that'll free up money and we can do some of the things that we pay, we've had to put off. In the past, well, even I guess it would be now, what's the number that you expect to cost for elementary Y? Is it about yeah. $18 million it's, 20, it's, 20. Right now I've gotten soft estimates from the architect who's talked to some construction managers right. who've done some recent schools. In elementary Y with about um, a student load of 830, 850 kids is looking about 20 to $21 million. Okay. Plus then you've got to add another million and a half of FF and furniture, fixture, and equipment mm -hmm. to, to outfit the school. So. So again, I've tried to shelter about 26 million. I'm hoping it'll come in total out the door 23 to 24 million. Uh, Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. I've, I've worked it out so that between the impact fees that we're receiving mm -hmm. and, and delaying some of these projects in the capital fund, we can do it debt free. We'll, right. we'll have the money with it. We won't have to do it. Well, I do not work tomorrow. The same with um, what we're talking about with the Yes. The yes. Cost breakdown that you gave us with this information would that come out of impact fees, or would that be? No, those would have. That would have to be LCIF funds. Yeah. Impact fees can only yeah. be used for new construction. Basically, new construction and growth in growth areas. Even though we're, we're we are collecting impact fees from the folks who who build down on their on their parents' land in Keystone, that seven thousand dollars. You know, we can't say only those impact fees can be built or used in that area because right. that's. That's untenable. Uh, so they all go into a pot and you use them where the growth is experienced. Right. But this, this but that, is not, not the only place that we grow. I had a question too. Correct. I, I, can we just come back a little bit? Uh, cafeteria extensions, Keystone Heights, Doctors Inlet, and what was the third? Charles E. Charles e. Bennett. Charles E. Bennett. And and initially, those were extensions like we did at Middlebury Elementary. We actually built a new kitchen and then, okay. then nice. basically in, increased. The, uh, the seating area. If we're increasing uh, the seating area of the cafeteria, that then increases the number of people that we can have in that school. Capacity. If the capacity of that school. It depends. You're looking at two capacity. There's fish capacity, which is the actual number of seats in the school. Right. And then there's core capacity, the capacity of the, the uh, cafeteria. And I thought that that's uh, whatever what one is less based on. Whichever one is less de determines the, the utilization of that school. Yes. Oh, I see. So whichever. Is so okay. if I if I got a cafeteria and I've got several of them, cafeterias that, that can hold 1,400 kids, mm -hmm. but I've only got 800 seats, then the utilization is based on the 800 seats. And in the <clears> Keystone <throat> Heights, we're talking. Elementary, not junior, senior. Yes, elementary. And the elementary school. And how many students does Keystone Heights Elementary have now? Uh, uh, they have thousands. Yeah, so they're like at 102 uh, utilization right now. Are they at 102%? Yes, got it. Okay. Yeah, they, get, they have 800, 838 700. students. Well, I mean, and their cafeteria uh, capacity is 823. Yeah. And the utilization of Dr. Zimlin is high? Right. At Dr. Zimlin? That percentage is high as well? No, it's 90%. Okay, but they've that's... Got, that's they've got an enrollment of 665 and their cafeteria is 735. So we wouldn't have to expand that cafeteria, but, but it does need renovation. Sure, sure. It needs updating that's, with the, the kitchen um, equipment thing. And, and, the, and I'm sorry, I'm just getting up to stuff on this. When were those... Just out of curiosity, when were those approved, or was that something that was in the general plan? It was. It was, in, it the, was, it was in the general plan and the educational facilities plan every year. I would dump a couple hundred thousand sure. dollars into sure. that project in order to build up to it, so we wouldn't have to take on a bond to uh, mm -hmm. to, to do yes. that construction. Got it. Okay. So the people yeah. in Keystone Doctors and the, and Charles E. Bennett, the families are expecting that cafeteria build up right now. It's it's I mean, been in it's this facilities plan for the past couple of years as I've I've dumped money in there years. too. Okay. So. so if they look at the educational facilities plan, they probably see. <coughs> but but I think moving in the long run, people understand. Patter, you know, moving over to Patterson Elementary mm -hmm. or not Patterson Elementary. I'm sorry, um, Oakleaf Plantation. What's the percentage of capacity now at Oakleaf Plantation? Oakleaf Village. A village. No, Oakleaf. Oh, is what oh, I'm trying to say. Is it 95%? It's at 95. It's at 95 and Oakley Village is at? It's at a, let's see, Oakley Village, 88. It's on this chart. 
but with expected growth. Oh, both yeah. of them. Yeah. With yeah. expected yeah. growth. And, and these numbers, these capacity numbers, except for the actual yes. enrollment numbers in the first, are based on capital outlay FTE, which doesn't include everything that Carl's FTE. Right. And they look at the past, so they don't realize Arbor Mills is building up. They're, yep. they're looking yep. at the past five yep. years of what's yep. happened and not... No, you're seeing the building. It's obvious. And, and, so these, these numbers are, we, are a little yeah. bit low from what it's, we can actually expect. And, the, and more going on, did you see in the paper over by with Village, I mean, uh, Brandon Field Village, yep. that new... 600 mm -hmm. unit apartment That's complex, an awful and, lot of kids. you know, again... Uh, the state doesn't look at the First Coast Expressway coming down here and opening up in the next year. They're, they're, again, they're looking at historical data. They're not looking at what's actually going on. Exactly. So given that, I don't want us to cut off our nose to spite our face. Um, is it really wise to build an elementary school with a capacity of 800 students in Oakley when we know that, you know, at, at the two schools beside it, we have, you know, 1,400 students and... A thousand students. Yeah, so good, great question, and um, this is where, and, and, and I, you know, I'm from Oak Leaf, and I hate people think that the perception is what it is when we live in there. I mean, I'm for all kids. I hope everybody at this table understands that and uh, externally. Um, what happened is, i be very transparent. I think we underbuilt in, with um, the first elementary school with um, uh, Oakley Village. Mm -hmm. uh, I think plantation just exploded because all, all, the, all the, the new building and new opportunities. Um, this will allow us to have at least 800 seats available and we could make it a K-8 if we needed to to start. But the beauty about using Coppergate is it provides opportunity to expand. Uh, you can build wings on it if you need to extend and grow. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe that um, I would like to bring to the board a reboundary eventually that sends um, that alleviates the junior high school in Oakleaf, which would help as well down the road. So um, uh, that, that would hopefully uh, assist with Orange Park Junior High School and on in Orange Park High School as well. So would the um, <coughs> so I I thought that the 800 students would be needed for K5. I didn't realize that we would have the capacity to go up to K8. I just put it as a K if we needed it to. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I, I would say K-5, it, it's going to be, I would say in the next couple of years, it, the K-5 is going to be pretty solid. And, and, and also, and represent there's the Armstrong CDD, which is right there on the corner of Brandon Field and Oakley Plantation wow. Parkway. Mm -hmm. There's a thousand homes going in there oh. in the next couple of years, which is going to be right next to Y. Where is that? Right at the corner of Brandon Field and Oakley Plantation Parkway. The There's a big oh, okay. right, right across, no. directly across no, from Public. Further, it's further down. down from that where you it's actually make down. that big turn and you go to that light, and if you go straight, you go by the Public. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. Um, they could go. They would. I would anticipate those kids going to this to Y right. because they're right on the same road. Uh, and it's just it's just down the road half a mile from, from Y. Mm -hmm. And also another development that's coming in just just south of Argyle is Wilford Preserve, which yep. is about 600 homes. Mm -hmm. And what that's going to do is eventually connect Cheswick Oaks to Oakleaf Plantation Park. Mm -hmm. So you can see the area east of Granite Field is going to, once that road gets done, you can see yep. the development start to boom yeah, down. Yeah, right. right. So I guess what I'm thinking now is that property over by Times that we're probably going to be sued over, do we need to I think they dropped secure their that? They did. I think they dropped their oh, suit. been notified about that. Uh, I'll check the Dan Sykes, but I heard that they, uh, or Sam Garrison, I think, called yeah, and said okay. that they had, uh, they had dropped their suit, withdrawn it. They, they, uh, they removed the items from the, uh, the Planning and Zoning Board as well as the VCC, and so they're not proceeding with their, with their wow. suit. So, yes, that, that, that may be, it's a nice little piece of property. Future that you site, think. right. Um, do you think that this elementary school, why, I know I, I mentioned it already, the Chimney Lakes Elementary, where my kids started out, and, and no portables at Duval County Schools. Um, everything's inside, and, and the one hallway had an upstairs where uh, fourth and fifth grade was up, downstairs was you know, mm -hmm. second and third, and then the other hallway was kindergarten and first. Are we building big enough if we want to event, may possibly use it as a K-8? Should we consider a second level on it, one side? When you, we, we've got a, a two-story design for why, but that increases the expense mm -hmm. greatly. How much? I think about six million dollars is the last estimate I had. And, and tell, uh, yeah. tell us how many does that hold? <coughs> that was roughly the same 
a little around 800, 850. Oh, it's not adding <laughs> classrooms? But look at your No, you go, go, you you go up. You so I'm well, just thinking with the Oak Leaf Junior High sure, is but so at because we ended up moving those sixth yeah. grade students yeah, back to Ardell right. Elementary, yeah. remember? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so, um, so, and, um, I, this comes in with the school choice, but and as y'all know, I'm not anti-school choice at all. But I think we want. I think we need to be really careful, and I think we need to have a plan. Um, I, I saw on. Maybe it was on Jacksonville.com or one of the other. I read an article about a developer building in Duval, but in the Oakleaf area, and they're touting it as Oakleaf, and they've got a new. That's a, a it's around the Arbor Mills. No, it was separate than that because I didn't recognize. Because the Arbor, name, Arbor Mills goes into Duval County and into Clay County. This the was county further north, west. but it was. I mean, it just this it, just trying to it reeked to me, <laughs> and there wasn't actually words on it, but it reeked to me of. Of developers, which I know Prime they do this to St. John's yeah. all the time, you can go to Clay County Schools. Yeah. Buy our houses, you can go to Clay County Schools. Well, that's true now with the now it's But it may not be with our percentages, and that's where I want to oh, yeah, be really, yeah. really careful about. Yeah. 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 Um, well, with the threshold we're going to use, and I'll bring to the to the board, and then I will probably send the information out in the next week and a half. So you'll see, and we start, and we'll start having discussions about it. It's going to be at 85% threshold, so we're going to be pretty much safe now. Some of our junior mm -hmm. highs uh, may be subject, but um, we're going to create excitement, and every school will have a marketing plan to start to bring back students who are in charter or uh, private schools in our county, but we've got to support them with a robust program that's exciting and attractive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I know a lot of parents that homeschool during the junior high years. Oh, yeah. A, mm -hmm. a, I do, too. It's a, it's a uh, different, it's a difficult <laughs> time. <laughs> it's probably this, the worst time. And this sure. chart that the superintendent had out to you is obviously only good for this year and next year because if we open 1819 a new school, we're going to have to reboundary right. everything, right. and all these numbers will go out the window. Right. Uh, right. Um, well, I, I, I think if there's any way that we can figure out the funding <clears throat> for elementary school Y, and still address, and it sounds like Keystone's cafeteria. Probably is the greatest need in that. Well, well, the other thing, the other thing, the other thing maybe kitchen. you don't realize is they don't even have their own kitchen. They have, they can't cook. They don't cook their food. The food is cooked at the high, high school, school right, and brought over. They have warmers. They don't even have an oven. Right. So you know when they're talking about you um, meeting the needs of students oh, in the summer and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, I mean, I know that you know we have the summer feeding program that's done at the high school. They have a much bigger cafeteria and stuff, and it's just you know it is across the street, but. Mm -hmm. That's that's I think where they're. No, uh, well, then, yeah, we can no, find a way. Can, we can make that a priority. To, to look I can at pass the funding that for that. That's, you know, that's a priority, and we can. What, you know, can you tell me what the um, for the board as well? Can you, mm -hmm. the chair? Can you tell me what the projected cost would be for if Keystone was Middlebury Elementary, where you actually expanded the kitchen and expanded? It cost one point five million. Mm -hmm. Well, do we have the room to go out like we did at Middle and that's, Elementary? And that's another problem you got at Keystone Elementary. Where do you, where do you build? You know, we, yeah, you know if, you're, if you're going to expand like that, where do you build? Is that the need to re is it to expand at, at Keystone? Or? Yeah. I mean, can, I mean yeah. so I guess my I, ask is can we get it done for $800,000? Yes, you, you can do anything. Well, okay, you, know. you can't get it for $800,000. Expand. And, and, yeah. and it's the, where the location is. Carl Hendricks said, "If there's ever a, a um, it's, you're so here. If there's ever a school that needs torn torn down and rebuilt from a technology standpoint." <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks a lot. From a technology. From a technology. Who you say? Who you talking about? He never said that. Have you been? Know. Have you been to Keystone Elementary? All most of the buildings <laughs> are concrete block mm -hmm. with right. no infrastructure. Where the cafeteria is located right. is in the middle of those concrete block buildings. So the old, old, that was the old Keystone School, so it goes all the way back when it was a K-12, that classroom building butts up to the cafeteria. Right. So that so that's on one side. On the other side of the cafeteria is the new administration that was done five or six years ago, maybe. Um, that, that Because they had, an, their administration used to be this little concrete block building smaller than W. Cherries. So they moved that, that's now ESE dedicated space. So then if you look at going further, you run into the property boundary. And Mr. Merrill and I um, had a conversation and I was planning on this in my board member comments, so this is not taking up additional time. Be ready 
We have had, there's been traffic complaints at Keystone Elementary for years. Um, the Catholic Church that shares a boundary with the elementary school has graciously allowed people to park on their a vacant piece of property mm -hmm. that they own for years. And teachers park there. When the teachers park there, it's not a big deal. Parents don't behave well. And parents drive up on his regular grass oh. at the church where there's sprinklers and stuff. Mm -hmm. So they've complained to us. They can, the, the one road that goes in there that has a cul-de-sac, technically, legally, the Catholic Church could put a gate up there. Mm -hmm. And our parents are using yeah. it as an alternate drop-off loop. Yeah. Additionally, um, there's, a, there, there's a parking lot. So anyway, they, there's talks of whether the Catholic Church would sell the school district 50 more feet where we could then put up a fence, move that parking lot, and expand the drop-off loop so that parents could actually willing? use it. We don't know yet. Yeah, well, um, yeah. The mayor went back to and, talk to Father Mike and to see if the Catholic Church would be willing to do that. And in addition, Bryce has a proposal, which I don't think would be a huge expense, that she may she may bring back to the board that could be done this summer to add a drop-off loop for the upper grades up a, a piece of property we already own. It's on the other corner. Okay. Mm. It would also alleviate, it would have parking with it and would alleviate some teacher parking needs as well as provide parking for that gym we renovated, the old gym that we renovated, that there has never been dedicated parking to. Because we're getting complaints from the city that when there's an activity there, people just park along the streets, which clogs up. So be ready for traffic complaints and that that's coming. Now that's not going to be huge dollars. No, no, no. Right. no, 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 no. And, and looking at the, the cafeteria, and Keystone, <clears throat> some of that's self-inflicted um, due to due to our generosity of taking kids in from Bradford County and, and all these other counties. Uh, Not at Keystone so. Elementary. Not Keystone Elementary. It has never been open. Those kids are all local. The only ones that I know of that had special pupil requests were business people who owned a business. And in that the may, city. It, it shows them are, are those the SBR out of county, and it may be those local businesses. That's what those are. Those are local business owners. That's the only school out there. There's, there wasn't a past school that we've owned and had out there at all, that are still owned property. Or we own. Own we own. We have McRae Elementary too, yeah. but to go between Keystone Elementary and McRae yeah. Elementary is about 25 minutes. Yeah, I wrote that. Yeah. And, and, and Keystone Elementary's attendance zone is really tight, so if you, mm -hmm. you basically you're almost going into city limits and sending the kids to McRae. Mm -hmm. I know, there, and and you can throw almost throw a rock, literally almost throw a rock if you have a good arm. You could, you could throw a rock from Keystone Elementary School and hit Bradford County mm -hmm. in the golf course that backs up to mm -hmm. Keystone High School. Those kids can't try. To, those parents try to get into Keystone Elementary, and they can't. What we do for them is they go to McRae. Mm -hmm. So we do provide a bus that, at Keystone Elementary that drives out to McRae once a day, and that's often most of it is actually teacher parents, sure. teacher kids, right. teachers at the high school where they can't sure. get their kids to school on time, mm -hmm. but they live out of county. Their kids are going to McRae. Right. There are some yeah. the, the the few kids in Keystone Elementary are not out of county kids if they. Well, they're out of county, but they may be, you know, the degree they've got or business teacher, owners. teacher kids. Or, we have a lot of teachers down there that live out yeah. of county. Let me ask one more question before we move on to the next item. Um, in order to go forward and build a school, we have to petition the state first for authorization. Are we in that's the what process? This, that's what the spot survey will do. And right now, the spot survey has test. been done. You've got the draft. Uh, Dr. Watson, who did it for us, has sent a courtesy copy to the state and say, look at it, do you see any errors, so that when he brings it back to us, the state will be ready to sign off on it as soon as you guys sign off on it. So will it, will it hurt us that um, Swimming Pen, and I haven't looked at it on here, but I know for years now, Swimming Pen has been below um, Swimming Pen Property. and... Property. Yeah, so they, and, they, and they realize there's going to be some areas yes. that aren't going to be as, as heavily as others. They try to look at it district-wide, <clears throat> and by taking the 20-year-old portables out of the elementary schools, that'll get us to where we okay. need to be, mm -hmm. and it's a and it's a four-year plan, so we don't have to do it all this year. Okay. You know, we're going to take a big chunk of it this year to, to show the faith, or good faith to the, the state that, yeah, we're, we're working towards that goal, um, but... This spot survey, if it's when if you approve it and then the state approves it, that gives us authorization to use LCIF money to help build the school. And let me just ask about Thunderbolt. Has the Thunderbolt always been 
close to capacity? I know here it says 70%. No, no. Mm -hmm. Well, Port Thunderbolt's got a big portable city out there. Oh, okay. You know, when yeah. when Fleming Island was going great guns, yep. we there's a lot of portables out of Thunderbolt. So that's why their capacity looks low. You know, the, the actual permanent building itself is probably pretty close to capacity, but with all the portables they got out there, that looks like their capacity as well. Mm -hmm. Wait, one last question. What is elementary R? <coughs> Elementary R is on 315. It's the one we traded with the Jerry Agresti a okay, while ago. Yes, it's on the west side of okay. 315. Where is it? Where is it? Just north of Rosemary Hill Landfill. Uh, <laughs> it's a cow country. It's on your way to the It's another country. Don't worry about it. It was actually the original property had a cow dip. Yeah. That we okay. swapped. Yeah. And yeah, we got a better deal on that. We, did. Yeah. we don't have the cow dip. We don't have the cow dip. No. No. We traded. But that was our original property. Oh my God. Cow dip in it. Don't How big is this parcel? EPA out there doing. Uh, 21 acres. They are a huge problem in the counties. That was, that was and, the and one where they came to us and called it Arsenic Elementary? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's, yeah. And, and building will that probably be begin in that area mm -hmm. in a, in a couple years when CCOA gets yeah. water and sewer down 315. Yeah. Then you're going to see yeah. construction start in that area. Oh, yeah. Ms. Clive, I had a question. <clears throat> I do. Actually, a, question, a comment more. Um, we lost a great deal of teachers at Keystone Elementary last year that decided to uh, retire early. Actually, they retired early. And one of the biggest problems was we even have classrooms that are, 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 were put together. So those two teachers in a classroom, and all to do with the buildings. They have no space to put even classrooms in. So there's a huge concern at Keystone um, Elementary, and I have a, a huge um, uh, representation out there and most of it always is around, um, I can't teach. I have kids that are just crammed into classrooms and we keep adding kids and, and so it, it was a real complaint um, that I went to about last year and I don't, I know because I park in the Catholic, you know, and I always do that because I'm parking there and I'm always like, they're going to come get me, you know, and I'm a good Catholic though, so they need me a lot. Um, but, you know, um, so I'm with Ms. Condon on this, you know, we can't just, we really have to do something about we that do. Keystone area because A, I'm tired of them on the phone, <laughs> and B, it isn't fair to them. I went out there and I spoke to the principal and I went into this, you know, kindergarten and first grade classrooms that were just cramped with kids, and it's, it's not, it's not, absolutely not fair, and, and I know when you know you guys start talking about building and putting their yes is a need out there, you're going to bring those Keystone people and you're going to bring with them their teachers. Good question. Um, for sure. Piggybacking on your yes, ma'am. I, I don't need to bring up this if it's a taboo subject. I'm not sure, but has it ever been looked at to take the sixth grade from the elementary school and put it with the junior senior high? Yes, I, I've actually had conversations <coughs> of, of moving, uh, asking junior high schools who want to absorb sixth grade. Mm -hmm. Some of the issue is is that um, so it's. I like to think of <coughs> yeah. sixth grade. I think we're one of the few districts that still have yeah. sixth grade in elementary. Yeah. But I, will, I, I, I say this. Um, I thought about running two pilots: a high performance school and, and a school that, um, like Orange Park Junior High, they could get they could grow from a six to eight. Um, in, in reference to utilization, the issue becomes is you would see that if you're in a uh, fluent community that your school will continue to thrive um, you know, academically. We see that, that some schools that are 6-8, uh, they don't do as well academically yeah. because 6th six, yeah, six grade is a trying year and parents rather keep their children in elementary mm -hmm. versus trying yep. to go to a, a junior high school. Mm -hmm. So I would say that with you could potentially, I, I wanted to do it full fledged, but I, you know, I, I got just talked out of it. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I believe it, it could potentially hurt us academically from our, our scores, and I think we could lose students um, to go to either private or or charter schools because they want to keep in the elementary side of yes. their key. Yeah. You know, the other I, side I think of that is that Keystone Heights is junior senior high school. Yeah. So moving into, yeah. it's, I mean, they've wanted their own separate <clears throat> junior high for yeah. years, and well, putting a sixth grader into a high school in my own is like, yeah, I know. So I, I say that because they want to keep them in the same. They, if you, if we had K eight, they'd love it. They'd stay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you see more enrollment in, in our uh, right. all of our junior high schools. Uh, K six, they love it. They don't, you know, they. 
it's it's weird. And you said earlier, someone said earlier about junior high years. It's a difficult time. Oh, so well, I'm and I even Mr. McCauley, we have an issue out in the Keystone area. I know of about 20 students who are going to, attending Putnam County schools. Our FTEs are leaving. They are recruiting. They send letters to all the sixth grade families at Keystone Elementary and McCray Elementary, um, touting their. And I say this term loosely, and I know I'm on public record, their Cambridge program. Yeah. Um, because even their teachers within the county make fun of that Cambridge yeah. program. So I don't know that parents cool. but parents are buying into something they think they're yeah. getting. Yeah. I should say that. That's not <laughs> politically correct. And uh, parents are buying into something they think they're getting. I believe that education is far better in Clay County without having a name of a, of a Cambridge program. And I obviously wouldn't do that with my child. But they're recruiting our students, and they're even bringing a bus into... Clay County to pick up our kids, um, and so that you know that's a, when you talk about marketing, yes, I think that's an opportunity. Yeah, I agree. Because I think we are, I think, and I know Keystone High School says it's at eighty six percent utilization, but she does have the space there. She selectively, like if a parent yeah. comes and says, yeah, she absorbs. Can I come in? Yeah. yeah, I think one thing we could do is to to alleviate and help Keystone is try to put. Um, Another pro, something that's attractive to McCray to, to, to get some of our students to, to buy in to, to go to that school. Um, no different than what I think we should do something at Orange Park Junior High School as well. But um, if we can create some type of choice that's exciting, maybe we can alleviate Keystone. I'm not saying that we don't go and try to figure out the funding to, to better expand the, the school and help it in every way, shape, or form because I'm committed to doing that. Um, so, so we have a sixth grade program at Orange Park Junior right now, a Cambridge type program. Um, you have a not sixth program? grade, it's it's seven, seven, eight. Eight. seven, eight, and it's it feeds into the nine, and it, yeah, it, it mirrors into it 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 has, so it's a magnet type. So yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. we I'm not sure we advertise that no, very we well. I think You're we correct. have to do a better You're job correct. at advertising that, and that whole street we really do have to look at. And, you know, this is something that I said to Mr. Davis, you know, a couple of months ago, and we had a very conversation about it, was um, some sort of magnet into that, um, you know, beauticians and, and you know, the technological, uh, the tech schools, the phone techs, um, schools, and, and looking at that street in such a, uh, you know, because you got that W.E. Cherry, and you've got that mm -hmm. Grove Park, and you've got the Orange Park Junior, and those kids are wanting that, and we never, I had an argument with Mr. Paul, uh, when it was, um, what's his name, was in charge of the STEM programs, uh, Parker. Paul Parker. Paul Parker. And this was everything in one, and I was a counselor there for 15 years. And that's, it, you know, when you're looking at things, that's where you need to look at putting academies and magnet schools like that in that area. And that's probably why we have that performing arts across the street that's mm -hmm. not doing very well. And we could absolutely rival <coughs> um, rival them that needs to be doing. And I want to throw something else out here, being it's a, a workshop, and this is the other thing I, is that me. I think our sales tax that we just renewed in the county scale sales tax, we get one-tenth of it. Mm -hmm. What a, you know, I don't think there's another place, if you look up north or where, you know, where you get funding that would only have one-tenth given to education. You know, education draw. You know, is expensive, and we've never gone to the county commissioners and and have a mm -hmm. chat with them. Um, that we might get a short end of the stick there. You know, and you know, we sh we probably should ask them to take a look at their funding because we're only getting one tenth. I don't know where the nine tenths are going. I think you have two school board members who have probably had that conversation. We've had that with conversation, yes. And, and in the past, the school And I think board, it should be. Past, I think you should continue this conversation. They're also yeah. providing services right. like books so, and libraries and fire. Yeah. Those can, are expensive, too. So I asked the board and, and, and to the chair. And then part of it goes to the municipalities, right. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Each municipality gets mm -hmm. a... I just also. marvel at it that we still have, you know, uh, $104,000 thousand miles of unpaved roads in Clay County. I marvel at that. that. If I you're going to go to workshop next Tuesday, it's going to be there. Yeah, yeah. I can, yeah. in the future, yeah. I have no problem. I don't know. I mean, I, let's, you let's guys probably had private yeah. conversations, um, but we but probably the, should the have tax, the conversation. I mean, and that's something that needs to be considered yeah. in the future from our perspective. But a ta if there's going to be a tax increase, but here again, depending on the legislator, 
legislature and to let us know what our milage rate will be allowed to be this year as well. Sure. Yes, ma'am. And, if and they have that I'm all for going to speak to anyone that I need to in reference to funding, and and I'm and I would like to push for and have cents tax um, for this county, and with it would all go to capital and be able to help um, assist with. The projects that, that we identify. That would go on a ballot. In yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm the um, I am the designee to the BCC again this year, so I will um, have those conversations and see. Um, I would I do know that I was reminded when they went out for that um, renewal of that mm -hmm. gas tax that um, that one tenth or whatever is at their discretion. Mm. Can they so, change that? Yeah, they, they can take it away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You don't, yeah. They can take it away. Yeah. You want to increase it? I don't want to take it away. <laughs> <laughs> that, that wasn't actually a gas tax, so that was the no, sales tax. Yeah, so I'm sure it's a piece of the one tenth. Yeah, because yeah. 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 it had been like a 20 years. Yeah, they renewed it for another 20 years. But they, I was reminded that. Right. I guess they were a little bit disappointed. They don't. So that's another consideration. They what? They We get impact fees, and they don't right now. Well, they did that to they, themselves. No, yeah, well, right. right? They right. they put a moratorium. I mean, you know, really, this this is my angst, always my angst, because you have the state legislators that are point blank told you you have to find alternative funding, and every time we bring up alternative yep. funding, we get shot in, in the foot because it's not our platform. You know. But they even do that to us on the um, what's the one that comes out in the summer? You get the, the your property tax thing. The, mm -hmm. um, Ed Valorum. No, the uh, you get the um, oh you get the little letter from Roger Suggs and it yeah. says your property appraisal. tax raise property just, appraisal just something just anyway mm -hmm. when they do that then the language that the state has required us to say it requires Dr. Lagutko to read and it looks as if the paper you know goes and prints. The school oh, board of Clay rate, County, of that. yeah, with the yeah, rollback rate. We have no control over that. But We're adopting what's set. Exactly, and, it looks and like they, like they say the school board it. of Clay County has right. voted to raise taxes. Right. And it's a formula that they passed down to us. Right. And based on that formula, we have got to adopt that. Yeah. So if we were to raise taxes, it would be in a separate thing. It's not in that roll back and adopt the millage rate, right. the millage rate. But is that's the way the state has designed the language and makes that it look like we have voted for a tax increase that we didn't vote for. I guess all I was trying to contribute is that I'm not denying that those conversations need to be had, but you've got to be careful and diplomatic in how you have yeah. them. So mm -hmm. they could yeah. come back to back to Well, um, it certainly can't hurt for our superintendent to reach out and see if there's any opportunity to increase that 10%. I do have um, something I want to add while we're talking about that. There's, um, the county commission has set up a um, play day in the legislature for March 9th, mm -hmm. and I had talked to Ms. Cornegay months ago about making sure we are represented. Are you sure it's March 9th? I yes. thought it was sooner yeah. than that. Yeah, I thought it was too. I, it's, no, it, it's, um, no, it's Clay Day in, in the legislature, right. not the one with Rob Bradford. Oh, 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 this oh. is where we have, we have the opportunity to have a booth in the middle of wherever their common okay. area is, and um, mm -hmm. the legislators can come by and, and see what's going on in Clay County. In Tallahassee? In Tallahassee. In Tallahassee. Oh, okay. March 9th. March 9th. They're going to leave um, at 6 a.m. with a big bus. Mm -hmm. The county is. Um, this is the chamber? Yes. No, this is, no, this is the county commission. So Stephanie Papaloosis would be who you would want to mm -hmm. talk to about coordinating with them. But I think between the academies that we offer, I mean, there's so much that we could highlight that we do that's yep. unique. And we've sure. you know, got earmarked funding for our academies. So I think that might be a nice mm -hmm. bit for what to highlight. But um, So this is all day in Tallahassee? Yes. Yeah. And most counties participate in it. I think this just might be our first year doing it. Did no, you bring that up at our general true. meeting also in sure. your remarks? Yeah. Just mm -hmm. as a reminder, and that way the community yeah, yeah, will hear sure. it. Okay. And the Rob Bradley legislative update is January 30th. Yeah, four. I have that on my calendar, mm -hmm. January 30th. And the only other thing I wanted to request, um, I heard some really staggering um, information about how our students are faring on the FSA and I would really like to see a breakdown of scores um, from our schools specifically from our high schools is where I'm here okay. and I'll just tell you the information I got was that um, you know we have around a little over 500 students in 10th grade at the Maryland High School which is our highest performing high school in the district um, and over 200 of those students 
did not pass the FSA. <coughs> so they had been put in, you know, remedial reading and all of that, and were being pulled out of some of them out of AP English and put into remedial reading. And um, they have ACT scores that will compensate and will eventually be able to be moved out of that. But what does that say about the FSA? So I just feel like that's information that we need to have in hand when we talk to our legislators. Um, how many favorites? How many favorites? And, and, you know, is the problem really our students? Because it kind of looks like it might be sure. a test. Mm -hmm. If an ACT nationally norm test says that the student's ready for college and, and the FSA is saying they can't graduate high school. Well, and that's so, why the push to have a nationally norm test right. versus the FSA. Well, I think that would be a great place to start in Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the whole adage about how to eat elements. Mm -hmm. Um, Mr. Davis, were you finished the conversation on uh, elementary school or the spot survey? Yes, ma'am. All right. No, 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 it's fine. Right right now on elementary. Why or was that all combined conversation? That, that was all. I mean, that's combined. And then if you go to S for D7, but there's one more, D8. Mm -hmm. D8 is the uh, elementary school wide architect contract. And uh, if we approve at the meeting that we're going to do a plant survey and move forward, with potential building of Y, then we want to be able to um, award the contract to uh, uh, an architect internally. That right, no. But they have this is a reuse of uh, yeah. mm -hmm. a copper gate that's, that's you know, so encouraged by the have state. To go out on a bid which would take too much time. An existing we, don't, uh, we don't have to go out and advertise okay. for an architect. It's a reuse of our plans, mm -hmm. and uh, he has agreed to do it. Last time they reused it right out to do copper gate, they had a 4.9% fee, and when we reused the plans to do uh, Shadow Lawn with the Plantation Oaks Elementary plan, it was 4.5%, and he has agreed to do 4.1% uh, for its construction costs. So, you know, that that's, I would expect it to go up, but that's come down. He's, he knows where we're at and what we need to do, and he wants to build it for us, so he's agreed to 4.1%. So this would say if if you agreed to the previous one, where the spot survey comes back with a mm -hmm. recommendation, and you authorize us to build Y, then this awards him the contract and authorizes the superintendent to sign it, because I don't want to wait till March's board meeting to come back with an architect contract. Mm -hmm. And we need to pull the trigger on this if we're looking <coughs> to open in 1819. Yeah. Like Who's the architect? Pardon me? Hall. Hall. So, I do have a question, though. Mm -hmm. It's we can go ahead and approve these items without authorization from the state, or do we need these approved first in order to... Uh, Correct. The uh, first thing is you approve the spot survey, we send it off to the state, hopefully within two weeks they come back and say it's approved. Okay. And with the previous one it says with, with state approval you approve us to build Y, and then with this one after we get the state approval, here's the architect. Mm -hmm. and, we're, and we're off and running and hopefully pushing trees down in May. And where does Keys, a school like Keystone end up then? Yeah, so Go we, back to that. Yeah, we so have to find out financially a, yeah. where what we could do to, to support Keystone. And we'll go back and commit and see what we can do to, to tier the support. And Keystone being the first, I would say Dr. Inlet potentially being the second, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then uh, Bennett mm -hmm. being the third. It, I, it, I say it, that openly. It could change based on need. Right. Well, I got to find out the, the numbers, numbers how so much it well, actually costs to do it. Are saying he's and, and my understanding, yeah, understanding yeah. Mr. Mr. Merrill had projected twenty-six million, I, and then he could have some money left mm -hmm. over to. Sure, to I do understand. It. That. Right. And I again, understand I've, I've tried to shelter twenty-six million, which I, I hope I is high. Cash. And if it comes in at twenty-three, twenty-four, then that's two million is freed up, and we can we can start with Keystone. Any further discussion? We, we don't have to do Keystone. I just, I was just... No, 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 no
at the kitchen. You know, one thing I talked to her about is, how about if I take the stage area away? She said, sure, go ahead, give me more seating. But I'm sure uh, yeah. Chris Somebody would want to use a lot of stage. Yeah. You know? yeah. so. I said I could get you more shit in real quick. I'll yeah, we, demolish your house. Yeah. 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 Well, here's what I will tell you. So back in the day, when life was in black and white, and I was a student, it, Keystone High School did not have the cafeteria that they have today. Um, their cafeteria was what is now the library. And so back then, there was no stage at the high school. And if you had any events that you needed a stage for, you went to the elementary, elementary. school for them. When I was in the Miss Keystone High School yeah. pageant, it was over there. Yeah. How'd you do it? Oh. <laughs> All right, I guess. Good. <laughs> Nicely done. I'm not. <laughs> I really don't want to take the stage. I'm not going to be that Okay, no, that's that's stage. Stage. I'm, I'm not touching that stage. Betsy has to be aggressive. But that's, that's, like that's a shame with Middleport that the, 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 the architect came with the, something that we hadn't thought about because we had thought about pushing things here and there, and he came out with his idea. So, you know, by advertising, you get some people thinking out of the box. And, and that came out really nice. Yes. They may be able to find something on that piece of land that they're going to talk about. So, so and we have one scheduled citizen's request on our agenda for. Um, Next week too. Mm -hmm. Now is that going to be a ten Which minute one? or a three minute? It's a ten minute. Okay. Can I, uh, can I ask you a question? Uh, so two questions on that. One, um, I thought that at one point when we talked about moving the whatever, we had talked about doing away with those, and I know we didn't yeah. change the policy. It's a policy change, mm -hmm. so as long as our policy allows, but we are we going to? Yes, yes exactly. are we going to? So through chair, I would love for us to set up a policy review, and I'd love to start with maybe that one. Okay. So, uh, I mean, what well, would be that whole section? Well, section the other side of this that is that with. we are now pushing that decision to March. Right. We have that was now my second question. And she I'm, would I'm like sorry, to switch to the March. And we right. might want to ask her if she would prefer to switch it to the March. Right. Since that item is now going to be on the but March. Then if we do oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ms. Smith but if we do that, then the March. I will call Mrs. Smith today. And see if. Yeah, the 10 versus the 3. She might want to ask. We'll we'll all favors, right? We can compromise on that. Yes. Are you waiting all this time? Yes, just please. Please. I'm sorry. Actually, Mr. Hendricks. <laughs> yes, and thank you, Ms. Caracas, for the opportunity to, uh, to clarify the question on the Microsoft Agreement. It is a, a State of Florida contract. <laughs> it is for a three-year um, agreement. However, at the anniversary of the agreement, we have four options. So every year we have four options, which the first one is to go ahead and extend for the next year. The second one is to ask for additional services. Um, the third one would be to, to do a buyout, which means we're, we're not subscribing. We're actually buying the license, which um, if you do that, they ask at least 30 days notice prior to the end of the contract. You could do that one at any time. I'm sure they would love for us to buy out mm -hmm. at any point. And then the fourth one is just allow it to expire. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a yearly... Um, when we renew, are we renewing one year at a time or three years? One year at a time. One year at a time. We have three years where we don't have to increase or decrease. If you go for one at a time, <coughs> it's more expensive because they look at your numbers every year. This way you don't have to look at them for three years if you don't want to. How, how have we done it in the past? Three years at a time. Three years at a time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I'm sorry you waited all this no, no, time. Thank, I'm, thank you for, for reminding me as well. Um, I would say going forward with contracts, and once you select an attorney, I'm going to push staff to really think differently about how we have <clears throat> potential out clauses and, and expected outcomes with contractors. So everyone that we contract with, if, if you know uh, there will either be a financial impact that they'll have to give us money back or not charge us, or we can uh, we can uh, remove ourselves and and end the contract. Um, I'm going to push us to think differently, and well, we're not locked in. And I'm going to you know hopefully we can get different ways of work in reference to not binding us to something for three or four years. So that's our staff, how well we can negotiate, and the lawyers support us. And, and there was a, uh, a cause of termination clause in there, which obviously if, if they mm -hmm. do something to, as a breach, we are, we are allowed to say, that's mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. we're done. Thank you. Well, as we all know, we, um, we reached an agreement with our oh, Play Education part. <laughs> Association, and um, we have not signed, they, they ratified it. We had. We had voted first, and then because of the timing, um, not doesn't normally happen that way, but because of the timing, um, the teachers ratified a week later. So 
in order for their um, pay to reflect it, Ms. Piva and I need to sign the contract, and then we're going to recognize it at the March meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and she will be, it's turquoise. Do you want a different color? <laughs> I'm ready with the turquoise <laughs> pen. It's not ten, actually ten blue. Ten years ahead of it. Right, ten days. Look this way, Ryan. We actually ratified this with 98.6% uh, so. Um, and well, what, what about the other one? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, what, I don't know what they want. Probably more money. That's probably <laughs> right. I did not pursue it. For it. it. Ever. They never vote yes? Ever vote anything. Oh. <laughs> they don't vote for higher They don't vote for teacher of the year. They don't vote. They don't I never go to the front office and say, no, why should I do it now? Yeah, the we need to read what you said. Maybe we can get a picture of the size of the house. But our daughter will be at Whitey's if you want to join us. Maybe hold it up and we'll take a picture of two years. Two of the house. Two years. And go to the house. Where's the school? That you use for assessments and teacher. That's what we look at for a gun. That's what we should take a look at. That's what we should take a look at. That's what we should take a look at. Yes. All right. And I'm excited that we did. I mean, I know we all are excited that we were able to reach an agreement um, so quickly this year. Um, I like he always calls me. I had a call her. Um, I also posted on Facebook about you all because there is a house bill trying to get rid of AC language. And, you know, the thing is, you're all about performance pay, and we're all about local control. This is a performance pay item. If somebody's highly effective, don't you want to reward them and keep them? And that's what this is about. This isn't about, you know, anything else. And I think we need to really start the school board, and I've asked the school board through Facebook, and I'm going to speak to it also, is to go out there and start telling your legislators exactly what this is about. We don't want to get rid of highly effective teachers. And... I don't know where they get off thinking that's exactly what you're doing. You're giving them some sort of privilege. You wouldn't do it to firemen or policemen. You wouldn't take your highly effective firemen or policemen and just not give them due process or just cause. And we're not even asking due process or just cause. We're just saying give them a continued, you know, let them stay if they're doing a fine job. And that's what it's about. You get two, I get two. Oh, here. You get two. <laughs> I don't have Tracy here, so I have to make sure I get all of them. Yeah, it's on his phone, actually. Then <laughs> 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 right, she'll say, uh, where's the copies now, though? Oh, no, no. Yeah, we're going to put this as uh, uh, an item on the uh, March agenda. Because I won't be there in February. I have to be in Orlando, so I'll be missing your February meeting. But Laura will speak for me. She's okay. agreed to speak. Uh, all right. Can we more talks? Were there, um... <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm hiring her. Sorry. No, you got I am somewhere in this organization. No. So, was there any board member comments before we adjourn the meeting? No, ma'am. Uh, Superintendent, any comments no, before we adjourn the meeting? All right, meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Yeah, really, she's